organizing this event and despite his very busy schedule he agreed to inaugurate our program i thank you sir for that uh, it is my privilege to introduce you our honorable vice chancellor sir took charge as the second vice chancellor of bengaluru city university on 15th april 2021 and he has been engaged in uh, teaching research and academic administration for past 38 years basically sir is a professor of english in the department of english mysore university initially and he served there since 1987 sir has served in many various capacities both at administrative and academic levels sir has been been sir before being appointed as vice chancellor to bengaluru city university sir was the registrar for karnataka state open university mysore and before that registrar university of mysore sir also has served as registrar evaluation of bengaluru central university when it was initially uh, set up here in the central college campus and he was uh, also responsible at that time to introduce e governance and brought out the examination manual of our university sir has also served as director of planning monitoring and evaluation board of mysore university and also as director human resource development center sir also served as director college development council mysore university and also as the nodal officer of rusa mysore university and sir of course has also been uh, ab abroad as visiting professor of english in the university of ibb republic of yemen Uh, for three years, from two thousand seven to two thousand ten, and he has made many conference presentations in Stellenbosch University, South Africa, University of Kalenia, Colombo, Sri Lanka, and IBB University, Republic of Yemen. And of course, he has also visited the Stanford University in the United States. Sir has also served as uh, in the U uh, as the. Uh, director coordinator for several international national and regional conferences and workshops on literature cultural studies and higher education he has to his credit a textbook uh, uh, that he has published connecting to post colonial college development council handbook he has also co-authored many books and uh, also Uh, presented more than seventy-five articles and interviews in reputed national and international journals, periodicals, both in India and overseas. He has more than fifty national and international conference presentations, both in India and overseas, and he has delivered more than two hundred special plenary lectures as resource persons in different universities and in the UGC academic staff colleges around the country. sir has been the chairman and member of the central government state government and university level academic and administrative reforms and affiliation and autonomous review committees and of course sir has served on many in many administrative positions in the university and also as in this various bodies of the universities like the syndicate the academic council etc of mysore university and sir's area of specialization is higher education commonwealth literature post colonial theory african fiction and indian writing in english sir it is our privilege to have you with us today as uh, our our uh, per, as a person who is inaugurating this webinar and we are indeed very indebted to you for having accepted our invitation sir i i welcome you heartily to this program thank you very much sir thank you so much thank you so much today yes. uh, as our guest uh, we are having as our chief guest sorry we are having mr eric perotel eric perotel is the attache for cooperation in french language at institut francais in india embassy of france uh, mr perotel was head of secondary schools in france 
and he has a diploma as trainer in foreign languages teaching and a master in french literature from sorbonne university paris mr perotel's experience abroad include being a french foreign language teacher in the usa and thailand he was course director of alliance française in uk he was attaché for cooperation in french language and course director at institut of français in austria attaché for cooperation in french language at institut français in bulgaria also as attaché for cooperation for french in india since 2019 mr perotel is in charge of promoting the french language in the five southern states of india sir i welcome you to this webinar and i would like to add that sir has joined us from france where he is at present and i thank you sir for your time and for accepting our invitation sir please welcome thank you very to much it's a, it's a pleasure uh, thank you very much also take this opportunity to thank and uh, welcome all our esteemed speakers who have come today who have made time uh, to share their thoughts and share their uh, uh, you know points of view on this uh, theme that we have chosen and uh, i would like to specially uh, welcome ms akiko sugita san the council general of japan in bangalore mr hubert raylard chairman german business group bangalore mr hari narain relationship manager of regional chamber of commerce and industry is paris ms deidre fernandez dominic she is the technical writer and translation associate manager bangalore mr deepa kalivardhan who is the translation specialist for spanish language at bangalore and mr sandeep bhogavili translation specialist french in hyderabad these are our uh, eminent speakers for the day i would also like to welcome uh, our registrar and our registrar evaluation professor ramesh b who is going to deliver the valedictory speech after the speakers program uh, i also welcome our dean faculty of arts professor narsimurthy who has agreed to preside over the valedictory function i welcome all of you thank you once and uh, once everybody for being here thank you so much i also welcome all the participants and the attendees who are attending this webinar either through the zoom link or, or through the social media links that is youtube and uh, facebook we i would like to mention here that we got more than 800 registrations for this webinar so i i i am really we are very happy and uh, we also know that this webinar is going to be very fruitful and useful for all those who are going to be uh, attending this today with all of us thank you once again and uh, with this few words i now ask our moderator to take over mr krishnan i think uh, mr krishnan is not audible uh, i now request our honorable vice chancellor professor lingraj gandhi to give the inaugural address over to you sir thank you thank, thank you madam uh, warm greetings from the bengaluru city university bengaluru karnataka india to everyone who has joined on this program sir uh, we are not able to hear you sir Oh, really? Okay. Am I audible now, madam? Hello. Am I audible? Sorry, sir. We are yes, still not yes. able to hear you. Uh, I think. I think. Um, uh, I'm able, able to hear. Yeah, I'm able yes. to hear. Yes. Yeah. Madam, maybe yes. the issue is with video. Huh? The perhaps the mic is disabled, sir. We are not able to hear you, sir. Uh, ma'am we can hear uh, so i can hear i can hear the vice chancellor i have no no problem to hear uh, ma'am you just set right your microphone in that case 
मैडम ज्योति ऑडिबल मैडम नो सर आई कैन हियर मैडम हियर यू सर सुजाता मे बी यू कैन पिंग मैम अ मैसेज डायरेक्टली आई आई टोल देम ऑल राइट थैंक यू ओके कैन आई कैन आई स्टार्ट मैडम मैडम ज्योति गो अहेड सर गो अहेड सर यस ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच uh so highly respected and distinguished uh, chief guest of today's uh, webinar on a very important topic uh, foreign language skills career perspectives and objectives uh, uh mr eric parotel attache for cooperation of french institute franquis embassy of france regional office chennai who has joined this program from france and my colleague and the director of the center for global languages dr jyoti venkatesh uh, my administrative colleague uh, registrar uh, dr professor ramesh and my colleague academic colleague professor narasimha murthy on members of the faculty of center for global languages and all the distinguished eminent speakers who have agreed to be part of this very important uh, global uh, seminar webinar and all the participants uh, on this program a very very good afternoon and it's indeed my a uh, proud privilege and pleasure to be part of this inaugural session and i thank uh, madam jyoti venkatesh uh, the chairperson of the center for global uh, uh, languages for providing me an opportunity to address this highly distinguished committed audience well uh, as you know a uh, bengaluru city university is a new university uh which uh, bifurcated trifurcated from the parent bangalore university 3 years ago and of course the center for global languages has been there for nearly two decades now but now as part of the new university uh it has to make a new presence and it has to serve of the world community and our city being a a global city known for information and communication technology and it's called the capital of india's information technology in fact a world renowned city for information technology and uh, this center center for global languages uh, where we offer uh, nearly 11 foreign languages uh is a proud uh department of bengaluru city university it is a center which connects the world community the academic community business community and community of scholars it connects the culture traditions and commerce and so on it is a global connect and we need to develop this center further and this development of the center uh, requires of course uh, the infrastructure and the new university is committed to provide the infrastructure required especially the ict infrastructure and this is very very essential of uh, the academic infrastructure like the required qualified faculty and i know these languages are languages of opportunities bit uh, french german japanese korean chinese and of course english and these are the languages of opportunities of many kinds of business commerce professional official and 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 these are also the languages of opportunities when we are talking about languages 
and we mainly think of career and career opportunities. But as you know, language. Uh, am I am I audible, sir? By any chance? Yes, yes. So the language has twin aspects. Language is a medium of communication. As a medium of communication, we are very well connected. But language is also a medium of culture. It's a carrier of culture. When you speak a language, I speak culture. When I speak a language, it means also speak of values. So these aspects of languages, language as a carrier of culture, as well as carrier of values. If the languages disappear, culture disappears, the values disappear. So therefore, we are all ambassadors of culture, not just the, the mediators of communication of various kinds a professional, business, official, uh, technical communicators. So therefore, while we are learning about a language, we are also learning about the ways of life, of their traditions, their practices, their, 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 uh, their value system, and the need for the language uh, is growing and the need is multiple. It is not just communication. So that's way the languages bring the world communities together, both academic, professional communities together. So the language of profession and the language of values, the language of culture, and that's how the languages have to survive and the languages have to interact. Only then all languages grow. Without interaction, languages cannot grow. And um, fortunately, or otherwise, um, most of us are connected through the English language. And we are communicating through English language. So English has become the uh, link language, not only between countries, some among countries, even within the country. For India. So therefore, anyway, what, what is important is, it is not that through which languages are connected. The thing is we are connected and we should be very, very happy about it. So therefore, the language studies are, have to be given due impetus recognition in the academic institutions. And if we don't provide opportunities for language learning, language acquisition, uh, I think we'll not be doing a proper duty as an academic educational institution. So therefore, we are uh, bringing the world together, the communities together, the scholars, people together, and more languages, more opportunities, and more understanding, better understanding. So and not only that, a person who knows a language carries a goods with him, he also carries the culture, ideas, ways of life, and the better human understanding. So this is an opportunity for us to know each other, to understand each other, to grow each other, this is the way we all need to go together as a single world community, community of learners, community of teachers, community of communicators. So this is an opportunity that the Center for Global Languages has created to hear each other from such a distance, from France, uh, Ms. Eric has joined, and is here, I don't know what time of the day or night is there, but we are connected round the clock, round the year, everywhere and everyone. This is the beauty of the technology. And it is a technology which has brought us together. Learn more and more and more, all times, anytime, anywhere learning. And uh, 
and this has to go on and we are here uh, to be connected and the center for global languages uh, this is in fact my dream special dream will have a special place in the academia uh, and in the bangalore city university uh, where it is housed in the historic place called bangalore central college the central college started in the year 1858 it's more than 150 years old it has produced great scientists scholars nobel laureate sir c v raman conducted his first experiment here in this place i am speaking from here from this very historic sacred place so therefore while i'm talking i'm not only talking about language or languages i'm also talking about history about the importance of place importance of our achievements and your achievements so this is a the opportunity to share thoughts dreams aspirations and the language carries all this it is not just the medium of communication with these uh, uh, madam jyoti venkatesh and the distinguished uh, uh, chief guests of the day they are all looking forward to listen to you and there are very highly distinguished speakers who are going to speak on different topics in different languages and this is indeed a happy world community uh, a universal community i'm very very happy to share my thoughts and views dreams aspirations with you all thank you for the opportunity and we all we all grow together as a world community so the world community and we are all the world is facing pandemic we are in pandemic times there is a lot of distress a lot of suffering and education institutions also come together to be in the forefront to face to combat this global virus pandemic and this language this medium this communication is also for serving at the society the language and society the language and so service the language and culture thank you thank you so much sir let's all work for the dream that we need to leave the world better and happier than we first found it this is a quote from matthew arnold from his famous book culture and anarchy thank you so much sir. thank you thank you sir we are all greatly inspired by your inspirational speech thank you so much sir once again i would now request our chief guest mr eric perotel attaché for cooperation for french institut du français embassy of france regional office chennai to address the participants can you hear me Yes, sir. Yes, very, yes, very very yes, much yes. very much yes. yes all right all right thank you very much good uh, good afternoon everyone okay good afternoon everyone dear honorable vice chancellor thank you very much for your kind words it was uh, very nice to hear you just to to answer your question uh, i'm not the only one in france right actually right now because uh, arina ren is also in paris right now and just for your information it's exactly 11 o'clock in the morning in france right now so it's it's okay we are not in the middle of the night so dear uh, honorable vice chancellor dear dr venkatesh dear professor ramesh b dear professor muti and dear dr krishnan dear guests uh, and uh, professors and students first i'd like to thank you uh, bangalore city university for organizing this webinar and to to invite me because it's a great opportunity for for, for us Just to let you know before, maybe some people don't know what exactly Institut Français, French Institute is. So the French Institute is the cultural department of the French Embassy. 
So the French Institute is based in Delhi, and we have branches in Kolkata, in uh, Pondicherry, Chennai, uh, Bangalore, and uh, uh, Mumbai, Mumbai. As uh, an introduction, I'd like to say that uh, students have to see international mobility not only as a matter of learning a language, studying, or to go sightseeing, and this is already very good. But they should see international mobility also as a way of, as a way to discover another culture and beyond this discovery as an access to another way of thinking and thus being able to take a critical look, look at their own culture. It will be easier to find a job because it reflects in the candidate an open mind. If France is the first tourist destination. It is also the third most popular destination for international students. Lots of Indian students go to the USA, to UK, to Germany, and we need to encourage them to do so. You probably already know that European countries are also offering programs in English. Now, let me give you some figures about French language. French, along with English, is the only language spoken on all continents. It is taught in nearly every country worldwide. It is the third most useful language for business and the primary or secondary language of many international organizations, such as the UN, the AU, NATO, WTO, and the International Olympic Committee. French is also the official language in 29 countries and will continue to grow in influence in emerging markets in the forthcoming years. About 40% of the world's French speakers live in Europe with another 50% based in Africa. And Africa is going to be, and already is now, but is going to be a very big market. With 300 million speakers worldwide, French is the fifth most spoken language in the world behind Mandarin Chinese, English, Spanish, and depending on estimates, Arabic or Hindi. By 2050, the number of French speakers in the world is projected to reach the number of 750 million, thanks to rising fluency and population growth in Africa. Now, what about France and India today? There are long-standing and historical ties between India and France. And I'm not only thinking about Chandigarh or uh, Pondicherry. Today, France is the seventh largest investor in India and India's largest European employer and remains very present and active in several important sectors. More than 1,000 French companies are based in India. They employ around 350,000 skilled employees, and most of these companies look for Indian students who've had an experience in France and an understanding French working methods. The economic exchanges between France and India have created a renewed interest in foreign languages. Lots of companies from other countries are also based in India. And what I'm telling you now about France works for all of them. So what I'm saying is not only regarding France or French language. When these companies, no matter if they're French or not, but when these companies have two candidates with the same skills, and I actually, I had a few experience and few meetings with a, a French uh, um, I'm thinking of Renault, uh, Saint-Gobain. Not 
only in France, but one experience abroad, the work experience. I'd like to come back on the students' mobility. In fact, going to France or any other country doesn't mean that you have to be fluent in the language. Can you hear me now? Because my, yes, okay. But with some basis, it will help you to survive in your everyday life and it will facilitate meeting people. Once you are there, it will be easy to take a course and to practice every day in so-called real life. France offers more than 1,600 programs taught in English, and I will give you a link later in the chat. But with the B2 level, you can get access to every program taught in French. Opportunities to get an internship or a job in France, but also in India or in any other country with a French company. As I said before, French companies in India are looking for young talents who've has, who've, who have experienced the French educational and work culture. In addition to their knowledge of French, as small as it may be, they will be better placed to understand the different of points of views related to intercultural issues. And when you start the process of learning a language, it becomes easier by the time. And we have to mention that Indian students speak already minimum two languages. This will help to study a new one, a third or fourth or fifth one. To conclude, I would say that in this era of globalization, it has become imperative to learn a foreign language. And I would say that English is not enough. Sometimes in France, we say that uh, speaking English is compulsory, but it's not enough. We need to, to learn another language. It's like to have a driving license, you know, it's compulsory. The present health crisis has prone a global economic crisis, including a challenging job market. In the given scenario, a foreign language becomes an asset for those who are looking for jobs as foreign's, foreign investments are widely spread across all major sectors of industrial activities such as energy, pharma, agribusiness, defense and aerospace and so on not to forget education and tourism, of course, in India. In a globalized world, a foreign language is a lucrative resource, not just for hospitality and tourism, but also scientific research, business, and technology. Thank you for your attention. I will try to stay as long as I can, but I will have to catch a train later, so maybe I won't be able to stay until the end. But anyway, I wish you a very, very nice webinar. And once again, thank you for your attention and thank you for inviting me. Thank, thank you, you, sir, for your very enlightening speech, highlighting the importance of France and French in the global scenario and specifically for Indian students and the Indian community. Thank you once again very much, sir, for being a part of our webinar. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Perotel. Thank you very much. My, my pleasure. It's, it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks as we are at the end of the inaugural session. Professor Lingaraja Gandhi, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bengaluru City University is a catalyst who is spearheading a new movement for the restoration of the glory of this very young university in this historic campus. His vision to put our university on the global map will soon be achieved thanks to his relentless efforts initiatives and motivation. In a very short span of time, he has emerged as a beacon of hope for this nascent university. And we hope that the Bangalore City University will scale greater heights under your able guidance and leadership. We thank you, sir, for your kind, constant encouragement and support and for having accepted to inaugurate this webinar with your esteemed presence. Mr. Eric Perrotel, Attaché for Cooperation for French, mm -hmm. Institut Francais, Embassy of France, mm -hmm. Regional Office, is a very familiar name amongst the French fraternity in India. 
He is a very cordial person who is greatly instrumental for the strong revival of French in South India. His enthusiasm for the propagation of French in India is commendable. His remarkable skills for organizing workshops for teachers of French, even during the pandemic, is certainly exemplary and deserves to be applauded. Sir, we thank you immensely for consenting to be our chief guest and sharing your views. We would now begin Merci. the second session. Je vous en prie, monsieur. We would now begin the second session of the webinar shortly. I would request our French faculty member, Ms. Sujata Swami, to continue the session by introducing the distinguished speakers. Thank you so much, sir. I would first of all like to thank all the eminent speakers for having agreed to speak in this webinar today. Uh, please note for all the participants that any questions or queries will be answered by mail. So the CGL mail address will be provided in the chat box. Please uh, mail uh, your queries to this uh, email. Thank you. Now, the first uh, speaker I would like to introduce is uh, Ms. Akiko Sugita uh, San. Ms. Akiko Sugita assumed uh, Consul General of Japan in Bangalore in June 2020. Her earlier assignment was in the Embassy of Japan in Singapore. Sugita San has extensive global experience working in San Francisco, New York, and Singapore. As first secretary, permanent mission of Japan to the United Nations, and as secretary general, Foreign Press Center, Tokyo, Sugita San has rich experience in public diplomacy, international development, and intercultural communication. Having worked as consul at the Consulate General of Japan in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and Singapore, one of the global hubs for technology and innovation, Sugita San is keen to expand economic and cultural cooperation between Japan and the Silicon Valley of India, Bengaluru. Sugita San graduated from Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. As a high school student, she studied Indian history and was interested to study Hindi, which she hopes will come true during her stay here. Sugita San is hoping the present global crisis will in fact lead to a digital transformation for advancing social and economic activities. Bengaluru has a key role to play here, and it's important for Japan and India to work together on digital transformation. Uh, please, uh, uh, over to you, Ms. Uh, Akiko Sugita-san. Thank you. Namaskara. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishnan, for a very nice introduction. Dr. Joiti Venkatesh, Dr. Gandhi, prominent speakers and participants. It is a great pleasure to be able to join you in this meeting hosted by the Center for Global Languages, Bengaluru City University today. I'd like to talk about how studying the Japanese language will help you find jobs and study opportunities for your career development. I'd like to briefly touch on the overview of Japan and India relationship. As India is a valued country for Japan, the government of Japan has designed programs that allow capable Indians to go to work in Japan or to receive job trainings or study in Japanese universities, among others. Soon after Prime Minister Modi started his administration in May 2014, he visited Japan in September of the same year. It was agreed that the bilateral relationship between Japan and India was to be elevated to be defined as special strategic global partnership. Facing the Indian Ocean, which connects the two continents of Asia and Africa, and located in the middle of the Indian Ocean, India, the largest democratic nation in Asia is an extremely important partner for Japan. The peace and security of the surrounding oceans of India is strategically important, not only for India's territorial interests, but for Japan's sea lanes, because it depends on trade. It is important for both India and Japan to work closely together to ensure peace and security in the Indo-Pacific region. From this perspective, the two countries have been engaged in bilateral 
and multilateral dialogues in security and defense affairs more frequently in recent years. On the economic front, Japan and India agreed on the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement in 2011. The total amount of trade between Japan and India has been on an upward trend since 2002. And the number of Japanese companies operating in India has been increasing every year, reaching 1,455 with a little less than 5,000 uh, sites in October 2020. In Karnataka, Japanese companies have continued to expand and have increased from 155 sites in 2010 to 534 sites in October 2019. Japan is well known as the most rapidly aging country in the world. The average age as of 2019 is close to 47, while that of India is 27 as a number of newborn babies doesn't exceed that of the deceased every year. The population has been on the declining trend since 2016. This has affected the size of the domestic market, the domestic demand, and the productive workforce population. Japan has traditionally had strengths in monozukuri or manufacturing technologies and has excel excelled in making quality infrastructure but there is an increasing shortage for IT talents. Contrary to Japan, India has an abundant young workforce and the domestic market is rapidly growing. India's workforce does not get credit only for quantity, but for quality. The young workforce is expected to produce abundant new technologies, including IT, PT, IoT, cybersecurity, aerospace technologies, and much more. However, to keep the new workforce constantly employed will remain a challenge for India. In this regard, Japan and India have a complementary relationship. Japan is in need for IT talents and Indian youth who are capable of IT and other cutting edge technologies need more job opportunities. Bengaluru is the innovation hub of India, the world's fourth largest technology cluster, and has the third largest number of startups at the city level in the world, forming a network with the world's leading IT hubs. A number of global manufacturing giants have R&D centers here. Many Japanese companies have begun to shift their eyes to Bengaluru. This is exactly the reason why the Office of Consulate General of, I mean, Consulate of Japan was elevated to Consulate General of Japan in Bengaluru in 2017 to accommodate the needs of the Japanese nationals and to promote the India-Japan relationship through promotion of business and culture in Karnataka. In this context, the chances to get employment in Japanese companies in Bengaluru or in Japan are expanding for Indians and especially for those who are studying the Japanese language. Through the study of a language, people can grasp its culture, business and social manners, and ways of living and thinking of the native people of the target language. Japanese companies in general highly regard the qualifications of those who have studied the Japanese language because it implies that the person who has study the Japanese language has a genuine, genuine interest in Japan and Japanese culture, and is likely to adapt well to the business culture of Japan. The announcements of job opportunities depends on each company. Therefore, please keep an eye and check for the job opportunities presented by the local Japanese companies targeting the Indian labor market. Now, I'd like to speak about the two programs introduced by the government of Japan. In October 2017, the government of Japan and India signed a memorandum of cooperation to launch Technical Internship Training Program, or TITP. This program would provide on-the-job training for participants in such fields as agriculture, construction, food manufacturing, machinery, and care for the elderly, among others. There are total 82 categories of job under TITP. 
By the end of 2019, more than 200 Indian interns who had completed the pre-departure training, including Japanese language study, were sent to Japan under TITP framework. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, entry to Japan has been restricted since early 2020. As soon as the entry restriction has uh, has been relaxed. We hope more trainees will be able to go to Japan from India this year. In this program, eligible and competent persons who are willing to upgrade their technical skills in Japan would be enrolled in the pre-departure training program offered by Ascending organization in India and receive training, including Japanese language skills. The Japanese language competency equivalent to N3 or above is preferable. The benefits of participating in TITP include not only to acquire, acquire work skills, but exposure to Japanese work culture, acquisition of quality management skills, personal capacity building, enhancing societal status, and hopefully getting higher wages on return to India in the future. Furthermore, as I mentioned later, there are chances to enter into the labor market of Japan by changing their status to specified skilled workers in Japan. Sending organizations will act as an intermediary with supervising organizations for the candidates who wish to participate in TITP in Japan. The National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC of India, acts as a focal point within the government of India there are six approved sending organizations in Bengaluru on the NSDC website. Interested candidates may want to contact one of the sending organizations, and I will share the URL of the website with BCU. Secondly, in January 2021, the Memorandum of Cooperation on Specified Skilled Workers was signed between the government of Japan and India. The difference between the specified skilled workers and aforementioned TITP is that in specified skilled workers program, workers are regarded as members of the workforce and not just trainees. The workers are expected to fulfill their skill, job experience and skills in the actual workforce. The program has been designed to compensate the labor shortage in some industries in Japan. The candidates are tested both for the Japanese language competency and specified skills. On the other hand, TITP trainees are expected to upgrade their skills and to return to their home countries to contribute to their own country's economic and social development. However, there are cases where TITP participants change their status to qualify as specified skilled workers by taking adequate tests in Japan. Admitted specified skilled workers are eligible to get workers visa in Japan for up to five years by periodically renewing it. There are 14 categories of work, including elderly care, building cleaning, construction, ag agriculture, fisheries, hotels, and restaurants. All this program has just been uh, as this program has been just being agreed to start between the two countries, the program has yet to be officially started. The Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship will act as focal point regarding skill exams and tests to measure Japanese language proficiency of specified skilled workers on the side of India. Please visit the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan for more detailed information. I would also like to share this website URL with DCU. We believe that these programs will greatly contribute to promoting mutual understanding between peoples of Japan and India on the grassroots level. Now, I'd like to highlight another government-sponsored program called Japan Exchange and Teaching. JET program. This program offers an opportunity for college graduates to go to Japan to work as CIR or coordinator for international relations at municipal or local autonomy offices or ALT or assistant 
for language teachers in English education in schools. The JET program has over 60,000 alumni from all over the world since its inception in 18, 1987. In 2017, there were over 5,000 participants from 44 countries, including two participants from India. This year, the Japanese government is going to recruit two JET participants from India. Those who are el eligible for CIR or coordinator for international relations need Japanese language ability equivalent to N1. As for ALT or assistance, assistant for language teacher, Japanese language competency is preferable, but it's not a prerequisite. Please find more details on the JET website. And I would like to share the website URL with PCU. Study in Japan opportunities include MEXT scholarship or scholarship hosted by the Ministry of Education of Japan. This year, there will be students of both undergraduate and post-undergraduate levels to be nominated to study in national universities in Japan under a full scholarship. This year's recruitment, recruitment process has just been closed. However, please check the general guideline for the scholarship on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan website. I would like to share the website URL with BCU. I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce an e-learning site for studying the Japanese language on the website of the Japan Foundation, JF. JF has launched a Japanese online course called Irodori, which you can register for free. On Irodori Japanese online course, you'll be able to learn Japanese language necessary for daily life in Japan using videos, extensive illustrations, audios, and other content. It says that after studying a topic, you will receive a wonderful gift on your My page. So please visit the Irodori Japanese online course of the Japan Foundation. JF is planning to expand the e-learning Japanese course in the future. I'll share the URL of JF with BCU. Finally, the Consulate General of Japan in Bengaluru has been hosting or co-hosting events for Japanese learners and those who are interested in Japan too. Let me introduce two of these events. One is the Japanese speaking event. The speaking event is a platform for all those who possess a Japanese language proficiency of N3 and above so that they may practice communicating with Japanese nationals. It is also a great way to connect with people from various occupations and industries locally. Another event is the Japan Food Fest. The Food Fest is more culturally oriented to give Bengalurians a taste of Japanese cuisine in a space where one can find all the Japanese restaurants gathered in one place for a day. As promoting Japan and Japanese culture is one of the missions of the Consulate General of Japan, we hope to be able to resume these events and more in recent future as soon as the situation surrounding the pandemic has more or less settled down. Once we have decided to host or co-host these exciting events, we would like to share the information on our website and Facebook. So I will share the URL of the Consulate General of Japan with BCU. As a conclusion, Japan and India have deeply shared the philosophy of Buddhism from a long time ago and are sharing uh, common values of democracy, rule of law, and free trade today. I believe that Japanese and Indians have a great capacity to learn from each other so that we can bond through good partnership to work together for the betterment of the global society. In this regard, I hope those who are studying the Japanese language will be able to play an important role in bridging the two countries and facilitate a transfer of knowledge and skills to both countries. I wish all of you the very best of success for the future. Thank you very much. Danya Badagalu. Thank, Thank you, Sita san for speaking about the various aspects of international cooperation between Japan and India and the interesting insight about the opportunities at the employment and educational level, which will be very beneficial for aspirants. Thank you. 
Now I'd like to introduce. Now I'd like to introduce uh, you to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Hubert Raylard. Uh, Mr. Hubert Raylard is now the chairman of the German business group Bengaluru. He was managing director EFD Induction Private Limited for 22 years, one of the pioneering German companies. Being the president of Indo-German Chamber of Commerce since 2015 and 16, and chairman Indo-German Chamber of Commerce of West Regional Council. Mr. Rayla is the recipient of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic Service in promoting cooperation between the two countries, Computer and Dungan and Mestechnik in Munich, Germany. Technical project management, engineering services, and application support for satellite based space agency DLR and ISRO made him interested in India. Under dual education, Mr. Raylard completed as technician for electromechanics and electronics, LEG Limited, and vocational secondary school, Freiburg, Germany. Mr. Raylard obtained state certification as an engineer for electronics and data processing from the Technical College for Electrotechnical and Electronic Engineering in Munich, Germany in 1984. He also became a licensed teacher for the German system of dual education and he specialized in microcontroller applications. A warm welcome to Mr. Hubert Raylard. Ms. Swami, thanks a lot for your kind words. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, thanks to the host, Dr. Choti Venkatesh. Welcome to all the members of the faculty of the university, Dr. Gandhi, Dr. Krishnan, and other members. Also a warm welcome to friends, to Mr. Parathel. Nice that somebody from France can join this meeting. And also a very warm welcome to all the guests and all the students. So uh, I start a little bit with a personal note. I got married pretty late to an Indian lady. And I have a son who is now 16. And uh, whenever I have to talk to younger people, I take him somehow as a guinea pig, whether he finds it interesting or not. And then uh, I showed him my presentation yesterday during dinner. And the thumb went down. He said, Hubert, this is very boring. So then I said, OK, I have to relook on, uh, on all this and uh, rewrite my presentation. And so uh, the theme is learning a foreign language can change your life forever. And uh, I will tell a little bit about my life because language has indeed changed my life forever. So when I started around 50 years ago, our class was basically always a little bit divided. I don't know how this is in India, but our class was divided in sort of technically oriented people mathematics, physics, chemistry. And then we had the other group who was more interested in literature, philosophy, languages. Maybe this is not so much the case in India since everybody speaks two or three languages, but in our times it was like that. And I have to admit, I was never good in languages. I belonged to the mathematical faculty, if you want uh, to say it that way. And that, that's why my son said it's funny that with your poor knowledge of languages, that somebody invites you to talk about it. <laughs> so it was a good and enjoyable conversation I had with him. And uh, since he is young, I also, he has no hesitancy to be open and frank, which I like. Uh, so. 
I learned English uh, in later years in my life, and I want to tell the students who may listen to this. For me, the major challenge in learning uh, such, uh, English was that I was shy to speak English with other people as an adult. And I was shy because it looked for me somehow odd if you are already 25, 30 years old and you speak a very basic, have a very basic language. I was simply not feeling comfortable. Maybe many people have a similar feeling, even if they are younger sometimes, if they are not very good that they say we cannot speak. And I, I can tell from my experience, you should overcome this fear. If you have a basic knowledge about a language, all the people who speak that language as a native language will appreciate it. And when I started my work in India with the Indian Space Research Organization between 87 and 94, my English was very basic and I made a lot of terrible mistakes. So I, I will share one mistake with you. So I had to give a, a small little speech uh, to our T engineering team. And I, I interchanged changed one word, which I should not have done. And what I said is, uh, our team is hardly working. That's what I said. What I wanted to say is, it's a hardworking team. And that, <laughs> so that and what happened all, we were around 20, 25 people, and they start all clapping and laughing. So they were, of course, aware that I didn't want to insult them. It was the opposite. So it was such a warm feeling that I felt very comfortable uh, in this scenario. And I would say the people at the Indian Space Research Organization gave me more or less the confidence that I started learning a little more uh, uh, English. Of course, nowadays, my son says, I don't have to learn this and this. We have small little machines. I tell the machine in English, and it translates into Japanese and vice versa, what you see in some advertisement. Of course, I'm not against using such machines, but I can also say it's by no means a replacement for learning a language. It's maybe when you are a tourist, it's an emergency tool if you need a taxi or something, but not more than that. Uh, I see, of course, the language as a tool for communication, but for me, it's much more than just words combined by grammar. I think it gives you access to the people, their habits, and it enriches, enriches your life in all aspects. And what you should not forget, I mean, learning, as you know, is not always fun. But there should be a good fun element and a practical use in something what you learn. Then it, the combination of this makes you hopefully a successful learner. Here I have another small little story. So this work for ISRO, I think in 88, 89, brought me also to Trivandrum. And Saturdays, I had a three-wheeler to go from Trivandrum to Kovalam Beach. And in Kerala, the education level is pretty high. So the three-wheeler fellow could speak English. And uh, one day he said, sir, you have to answer one question. I said, yes, I will try to answer if I know. And then he said, sir, why are all white people highly stupid? <laughs> what does he mean? And I said, why do you think that we are all highly stupid? And then he said, sir, it is 35 degrees. You are wearing a shirt. You are wearing a, a, a jeans and you are sweating. And I have much less knowledge than you. And I have a lungi and I'm not sweating. So that was his perception that we are all a little gaga at the West, wearing clothes which are not suitable to the climate, and he was much superior. 
The interesting thing is, uh, this gentleman gave me access to the rural life uh, in that area. So we went out once with a fishing boat and so many other things. And that's what I mean, that is the beauty. In my case, English was a foreign language. That is the beauty, that you come in contact. And culture is not always something on a very high level. It's also the day-to-day -day life and how people perceive something or how they see something. And you could see if he says, we are all highly stupid, that is an insult. He didn't see it as an insult. He just thought we are like that. So, uh, and wanted to address it. So it was a lot of fun. And that also triggered in me the, yeah, the fun in learning more English. So I will tell you how it happened. So as I said, I was uh, always technically oriented. And when I was around 26 years old, I grew up in a small town in South Germany, Freiburg. I thought you should see a little more of the world. So I wanted to go to the US. What I conveniently overlooked that you need a good command on English for that. <laughs> so. I couldn't go to the US. I went to another big city in Germany, in, to a city like Munich. That was a step forward for me. And I could join a very advanced technology-oriented company. Then I discovered that my technical knowledge, I was, uh, let's say, a trained worker. I didn't study at that time. Uh, I thought my theoretical knowledge is not good enough. So I started to study in the age of 30. So my engineering degree, I was doing with 32. I'm not saying this is a career path for India, but in Germany, this is possible. And I had and earned enough money, I could finance my study. And then I was uh, able to even join a more technical oriented company in the field of aerospace. Then I discovered if you want to play a role in international projects, you have to learn a better English. So during my study, I learned a little bit English, but as I said, I was not good at, at it and I was always interested in something else. So then uh, I said, let's, I saw an advertisement going for one month to England to learn English. That was, I thought, that should be a good step forward. Then two days before I left, I went to downtown Munich and saw an advertisement. You can learn four weeks English in San Francisco. And then I saw the price tag, which was much lower than England. Then I said, how is this possible, including flight and everything, that it is cheaper than going to England? So I went into the shop. And he said, somebody has to re re return this course and he had to pay half of it. So, and uh, you have to fly to the US on Sunday. This was on a Friday. So I'm afraid I cannot sell it anymore. So that's why I offer it for half the price. So I'm looking for a customer and I told him that customer is me. So then we had some complications because he didn't accept credit cards and also, but Sunday I was on my way to California, San Francisco. And that was a sort of a childhood dream of myself that you can, you can go in a country where you don't speak the English, the language very well, and you go to a very nice town of that country. And, uh, my English improved a little bit. And then what happened in this space company, they get got once the requirement from the Indian Space Research Organization to install a German experiment on an Indian satellite. So applied for that. And in September 87, I landed in uh, Bangalore. So what I can say this that I, uh, Learned English has changed my life drastically and that I try to improve it has changed it even more. So when I started to work uh, at, in Bangalore at the satellite center, I had to install a camera 
and I had to make reports in English. I tell you, then I regretted once in a while my decision because uh, I had to. I needed for two A4 pages, I needed one Sunday. So then uh, sometimes I was sitting there and say, why the heck did you do this? You could simply see, sit in your native place and have a nice beer and enjoy the day. But step by step, you overcome all these uh, things and then you enjoy it more and more. So it's always a mixture between hard work, fun, disappointment and whatsoever. But uh, I liked it so much here that when this program ended in 94, I applied again for a job here and was then 20 years managing director of EFD induction in India. I was the president of the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce, which is always a period of one year. And many other exciting things uh, I could learn here. I got married here to an Indian lady. So that's why I came to the title, learning a language can change your life. What I want to say, of course, you have, if you are an electronic engineer, for example, you should be a good electronic engineer. You cannot replace that with a language. But if you are a good electronic engineer, your opportunities learning a foreign language uh, can really open up like, I will not repeat this because the people before me have already mentioned this. There are many programs, whether German programs, French programs, Japanese programs, where you can participate. Uh, and the opportunities I feel nowadays are endless. Whether you are 20, 30 or 40, take it because it uh, can influence your life in ways which you don't know yet. And hardly it's know that you don't know yet. That is the fun of life, I feel. And language plays a role uh, in this because it gives you the access to the culture of that country in many facets. And uh, what I have discovered in my journey the last 30 years that I feel Indians and Germans have many things uh, in common. So this is shortly, let's say more, let's say from a practical point of view, I will try to show you four pictures. Let's see whether it works. I will go to this screen sharing thing. I'm not allowed to share the screen. Can you allow me or not? Sir, please press the green share icon, sir. You can. You I take the green item and it says host, host disabled participant. One second, sir. One second. Yes, yes, no problem. We can try if not. Uh, please then try not. now, sir. Please try Should now. Should I try? Yes, yeah, sir. now it works. Thank you, sir. No, somehow it's not. One second, I will try again. Give me a few seconds. I will try. Sure, sir. Take your time. Yeah, it's not. Maybe it's nice to, to see if we are successful. Now I make an attempt again. Basics. Ah, yeah, I found it. Can you see now? Yes, sir. We can see. So just to give you an idea, this is a 30-year-old camera which we installed on an Indian satellite. So this was a camera where you can take three-dimensional images from the Earth. And this was my job in 87 to install it here in Bangalore. Uh, then I can show you, this was the team who, uh, from the satellite team, and you can see me here. This was Mr. Tyagarajan, the project manager. Then I was also in Drivendrum. You can see our team in Drivendrum, much smaller rockets. Somehow I was, I think two Germans, we were here. 
That was also, I think, in 1990 around. And this was in Sri Harikota, inside the launch tower of the Indian rockets. You can see uh, the rocket before uh, the shell is there. So this is the satellite, and we are dancing around it to see that the equipment is working. So this picture is also from around 1990. So what I want to say is, just to give you an idea, that brought me to India. And if you learn a language, suddenly you end up in a satellite center installing cameras on a satellite. I encourage all of you who listen to consider seriously to learn a language, watch foreign movies, read comics, read books, whatever you can do. Uh, it will, there is always a potential, it changes your life. And don't see it only as a commercial thing that you become richer. That is, if that is a nice byproduct, earn as, money, as mon much money as you want. But uh, the cultural aspect, I feel, is uh, much more important. So I thank you for your attention, and I hope it was a little interesting to you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Rylar, for this very practical overview. And uh, thank you for sharing with us your personal experiences in this journey of language learning also. Thank you. Our next speaker, our next speaker uh, Mr. Hari Naren. Mr. Hari Naren is the Relationship Manager for French and International Clients at the Chamber of Commerce in Paris, France. Uh, Mr. Hari completed his Bachelor of Fine Arts from Vishwa Bharati University, Shanti Niketan, West Bengal. From 2010 onwards, he studied French at Alliance Française of Bangalore. He completed the Delft B2 level and he also completed his French language teacher education. Mr. Hari obtained his master's in international relations, uh, francophonie and culture from the University of Jean Moulin, Lyon 3, France. Uh, Hari, sir, has worked as process executive at the multinational society, uh, uh, multinational company, Société Générale uh, in Bangalore. And uh, he also worked as process executive at Credit Agricole, CEB, in Singapore and Mumbai. Uh, Mr. Hari has taught Delft levels A1 and A2 French at Alliance Francaise of Bangalore. And he was also education counselor at Campus France during the same period and later in turn in international relations. Mr. Hari has experience working in the fine arts, education, French, and as a foreign language, banking and uh, diplomacy sector. He is also skilled in intercultural and international relations. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Hari Nari. Uh, thank Mr. you so much. Thank you, thank you uh, Jyoti ma'am. Uh, thank you for calling me uh, to participate in this webinar. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to uh, see you online uh, during this webinar. We have already worked together when I was uh, working in Campus France in Bangalore. And I'm also happy to see uh, Krishnan sir, because I've also worked with uh, Krishnan sir when I was in Bangalore. And uh, I am really pleased because I am from Bangalore and I did my PUC from uh, Bangalore University. Uh, many, many years ago, and uh, it gives me a uh, great pleasure to talk about uh, my experience of learning French language and uh, working for French companies and how it has uh, influenced or it's an advantage for Indian students, particularly. And uh, being a Bangalorean, being an Indian, I would like to share my personal experiences and also uh, the work I do currently. So if I can share my screen, I have a PowerPoint presentation, which would be easier, I think. OK, so uh, can everyone see the presentation? Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes. 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 OK, so uh, a short presentation. And what are the advantages of learning a foreign language? I would uh, speak about French language because I learned French language when I was in India. And uh, 
how that has influenced in my professional life. So uh, currently I work for the Chamber of Commerce and Industries in Paris. I promote French language tests and uh, diplomas. We have uh, different kinds of uh, French language tests uh, to, uh, for students who want to study in French universities or Francophone universities in different countries and different Francophone countries. Or uh, if uh, people, they have uh, the motivation or they have the desire to immigrate to Canada or Quebec or to have the French nationality or the French uh, uh, card de résident, the working uh, visa card, if that is the right translation. So uh, like many of the other speakers uh, spoke about, uh, the vice chancellor also mentioned, and uh, uh, learning a language, it opens a lot of doors and it also opens the door to a different culture. So it's not just about learning the grammar. It's not just about memorizing uh, conjugations, but it is also about knowing uh, a different culture to uh, immerse in a different uh, cultural aspect, not just the culture, but films, gastronomy, uh, many, many, many other things. So our belief is that the ability to communicate with a different, uh, in a different language will definitely open a lot of different doors. So the French language will also add great value to uh, people to find jobs in French companies or multinational companies who are always looking for uh, international uh, employees to recruit for the cultural aspect and many different aspects. So as many of you know, the French language is spoken by uh, 274 million people in the world. It's the third language most used for business and the fifth most uh, spoken language in the world. 84 states and governments promote the use of French language. So we at the Chambre de Commerce, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, we have the diploma to uh, in different sectors. So we train people in different areas of international relations, hotel management, tourism, uh, medical sector to learn French and to validate with a certificate, which would definitely help in uh, their uh, CV, which would be like a, a asset to put it on their CV and to uh, uh, for the companies to uh, recruit French, uh, to recruit Indian uh, students or uh, international students. So to um, conquer new markets, to improve your international mobility, to advance in a company, to enhance uh, employability in, with international or francophone countries, which is an additional aspect. And like, uh, I would definitely say that uh, being an Indian, being uh, from Bangalore, uh, English uh, is spoken by almost uh, all the majority of the country. So English for us is like our second language. So it's always better to learn another foreign language, be it French, be it German, be it uh, Spanish, be it Japanese, which would definitely add uh, value in uh, your CV for the students of uh, Bengaluru City University. So uh, there are a lot of French companies uh, based in Bangalore, based in India, who uh, recruit a lot of uh, Indian employees. So we have, uh, I, for example, worked in uh, Société Générale and Crédit École and the French Embassy in India. And it was, uh, knowing French was always uh, an added advantage for me to find a job in uh, French companies based in India and uh, in other parts of the world. So if I would, uh, I will share the link to our website if uh, students of Bengaluru University are interested to have a look at our website to get uh, tips to learn the language, to, uh, to um, read the testimonials of other students, Indian students, international students who have learned the language, who have found a job in French companies, uh, you can always uh, get in touch with us. And for example, in this screen, you can see um, we had a training program for the 
uh, employees of uh, a hotel in Goa who are um, receptionists or uh, students of hotel management. We trained uh, a bunch of uh, students of uh, a hotel in Goa. So we do a lot of, we are in contact with a lot of institutions, private and public, a lot of universities, colleges throughout the world to train uh, students and teachers uh, who are into uh, teaching French and learning French. So that's our job. We cater to, uh, uh, we do more than 5,000 diplomas uh, every year. We have a lot of uh, people who take our test, uh, which is called test, test d'évaluation de français, the French test. And we, for, we also um, train French teachers throughout the world. So coming back to uh, India, uh, I did work in Campus France. So I was in touch with all the universities and colleges and high schools in Bangalore, especially in Karnataka when I was working in Campus France uh, three years ago. And we, in collaboration with the network of Alliance Francaise and the Institut Francais in India, we do a lot of uh, webinars, we do a lot of uh, events to promote French language, to promote French culture, to promote uh, employability in French companies in India. So uh, here we have in India, uh, French language is picking up. There are a lot of private institutions. There are a lot of Alliance Francaise and universities and colleges who are promoting learning French uh, within uh, their uh, area. So a high demand in schools, colleges, and universities. In private schools, uh, French is one of the foreign languages taught. So you have 400 schools and uh, 400,000 students in India. So the employability in French companies, there are, uh, there are companies based in all the major cities and small towns. Uh, you have aeronautics, defense, energy, telecom, transport, health sector, banking, luxury and hospitality, cosmetics, environment, sport. So you have all the major sectors, uh, French companies based in India who recruit hundreds and hundreds and thousands of uh, Indian uh, Indians to work in their company. And English is one of the uh, languages used uh, at work, but knowing French would definitely help uh, to uh, climb up the ladder. And uh, French is the employability of um, knowing French language, not only is uh, for France, but also in uh, French is spoken in Switzerland, Luxembourg, Belgium, Canada, and many, many countries in Africa. Uh, French for business. So now the there are, like I told you, many, many uh, French companies and many employees who learn French. So it's, uh, it's always uh, an added advantage. And we also have uh, the Institut Francais, the French embassy in India, brings in French teachers from France to teach in um, uh, Indian universities and vice versa. So each year there are more than 100 Indian uh, students who come to France to teach English in schools and colleges in France. It's like an exchange program. It's an ass assist assistant, uh, language assistants who come to France for a period of six months or nine months to teach uh, English. And you have French national nationals who go to uh, different uh, universities in India to teach French. That is also uh, if uh, students of Bangalore University are looking for uh, looking for um, going to France and teaching uh, English, that is uh, also um, a good cultural exposure for uh, young students. I would uh, highly recommend that. And uh, I also know for a fact that there were French nationals uh, who came to Bangalore University to teach uh, French some years ago. So then you can always uh, contact the nearest Campus France office uh, uh, present in 
13, there are 13 offices present in different cities in India who organize a lot of workshops and events uh, like CV and SOP workshops, information sessions. You can uh, talk to the universities to uh, get in touch with if, if uh, students are interested to doing masters or PhD in France, you can get in touch with Campus France in India. So this was uh, an event that uh, we organized when I was working in uh, Campus France in Bangalore in 2017. We uh, called all the French companies based in India, based in Bangalore and South India particularly, to come and uh, talk to Indian students who are learning French in Bangalore. Uh, and it was like a speed dating with around 25 French companies who uh, were recruiting Indians in their companies in India and uh, in other foreign countries. So that was my quick presentation and we have a very good relationship with France and India. You can see uh, uh, the selfies taken by uh, Mr. Macron and Modi some years ago. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hari, for this very informative session. You have very clearly explained about the various courses that are open and also the various channels that are available for those who want to pursue a career using the French language, both in India and abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we will now take a short two minute break and we will resume with our next speaker after this break. Thank you. So uh, I would like to just add that uh, Center for Global Languages, Bangalore City University offers uh, these following uh, foreign language courses. Those who are interested could contact us at the contact details as you can see given below. You can call us, you can email us, and please do follow us on the social media platform at CGLBCU. We will be soon starting our admissions. Uh, so please uh, contact for any details you may require regarding whichever course you are interested in. We will be back shortly. Please stay put so that you have other very interesting speakers to follow.
Please unmute, Sujata. Please unmute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Deirdre Fernandez Dominic. Uh, Deirdre Fernandez Dominic, madam, is the technical writing and translation associate manager at a giant IT firm in Bangalore. Now, before entering the corporate world in 2012, Madam uh, Deirdre followed her professional call as a teacher. She was associate professor and head of the Department of French, first in R.A. Kodar College of Commerce and Economics, Mom uh, Economics Mumbai, then at Mount Carmel College, Autonomous, Bangalore for 14 years. Besides being a teacher at core and a translator by profession, Madam Deirdre is also an interpreter, language trainer, training coordinator, and technical writer, content writer, and reviewer. She is currently managing a translation team for a French client while also being editor for the newspaper of the translation capabilities spread across India. In addition to her profession, Madam Deirdre is also passionate about music, baking, car rallying, traveling to francophone countries across the world. A big welcome to Madam Deirdre. Over to you, Madam. Thanks, thanks, Sujata. <laughs> good afternoon, uh, namaskara, bonjour, konnichiwa, guten tag, hola, ciao, to all of you who've logged in, and uh, to our esteemed panel, uh, Dr. Lingaraja Gandhi, Madam Jyoti Venkatesh, uh, Mr. Eric Perotel, Akiko Sugita San, Herr Hubert Rylard, Monsieur Hari Narain, Senior Deepak Kalivartan, uh, Mr. Sandeep Bogavili, and Professors Ramesh B. and Narasimha Murthy. Wow. Um, I am so honored to be part of in such August company that before I scatter and stammer my way through what I have prepared, I'd like to place a disclaimer. After five eminent speakers already, I fear I'm going to sound repetitive in a lot of things that have already been said. So I hope you will humor me and um, allow me to recount my journey and my experience as a foreign language learner, as an educator, and as a translator who works in a team surrounded by uh, language translators from uh, different other languages as well. So uh, how did it all begin for me? Well, I grew up in an era when uh, foreign language was the privilege of a few because not many schools offered it. And if your school did, then that certainly meant something. Um, in fact, back then, French was probably the only foreign language that made its foray into state curriculum. And in fact, international schools and curricula were almost unheard of. And the reason often cited back then was that we can't find French teachers. And this uh, situation struck me so much that it became one of the reasons I picked French to teach. So then I took up French. It, it wasn't a career move, uh, but mainly because it sounded so fancy to hear my sister say, qu'est-ce que c'est, c'est un livre, ou je veux regarder la télé. And quite honestly, I didn't dare ask uh, what I love you meant, which is what most people who start a language today will ask you. That's the first thing they will ask you, you know, and why not? You spread the love. So there I was with my hand-me-down French textbook, uh, the famous Mouget Bleu, learning about Les Vincent, Les Le Grand. And it also quite tickled me how uh, Pierre, their teenage son, would drink wine at dinner. Uh, and then, of course, how could we forget the French Bible of sorts, the Dondo, which was our go-to, much like the Renan Martin was for English grammar. And then I trudged, uh, you know, I made my way through the next couple of years in school and entered shark-ridden waters of uh, pronopositif and demonstratif and objet direct and complément objet indirect and suddenly the safety of that shoreline was now far behind and I so desperately wanted to stop paddling and rowing and I kept hearing around me 
If you don't do this, you will lose marks. Write this five times till you remember the meaning of this vocabulary. Practice your conjugations, even if you don't remember or you know don't understand the complete meaning of the sentence. And then somewhere, I think, I mean, now in hindsight, I, I realized I was a non-quitter even back then. So out of sheer determination and probably a little bit of stupidity too, I kept at it and through my 10th and 12th. Um, and then suddenly I started to spot land. And um, that's when I realized I loved this language so much that I wanted to pursue its uh, literature and language and culture. And I must, I have to, I can't not uh, say this, but I was fortunate enough to have some of the best teachers along the way who didn't make it about, um, you know, vocabulary and remembering grammar rules, but instead they, um, uh, you know, they, they encouraged us to participate in cultural fests and, you know, interactive programs with other students to attend seminars and workshops and get a more global understanding of everything. And uh, all of this through my undergraduation at Elphinstone College and my uh, post-graduation at Mumbai University and through all my levels until my deep sweep at Les Alliances Francaises. Well, long story short, French, uh, which is what I studied until my master's, was only but a starting point uh, for my encounter with foreign languages. And this led me to meet so many interesting people from across the country and the world. And then I went out also and met some more interesting people from different cultures. And this richness that all these encounters brought me is still helping me hold it all together when you know we're going through this no travel uh, phase this last two years. But over these last 10 years, uh, I did dabble with a bit of very basic German. And then I did try some Portuguese because I thought somewhere I owed it to the goal in me. And I did do one level of Japanese, but totemo uh, muzugashi this. Now, although due to non-use, I know just smartings of these languages, what has left a mark is um, the love that I developed and, uh, you know, everything that I learned about the people of uh, these languages, you know. And uh, while French has uh, been life for me and it always will be life for me, um, I still continue participating in a whole lot of teachers' trainings in India, France, and Budapest, and this has helped me stay relevant. Now, before, uh, you know, the top, my topic is uh, foreign languages being an asset, and, or rather more than an asset, so before we start talking about how it is an asset uh, or rather more than an asset, let's, let's, let's share why I think it is a damn good asset to begin with. So first, what I did was I went to all of these online dictionaries and looked up different meanings and all of them boil down to the same definition of an attribute or a skill that makes a person or thing add value to an existing situation, and that value being either physical or intangible. Now, as a linguist, and even more as a teacher of language, I've always felt that language isn't what you study to give an exam or get a certification. Most definitely, certification is needed as a validation of uh, our level and our competency, but, it is what you do with language outside of the classroom that matters. When we learn a language, we are to ask ourselves, would I be able to make general conversation with a foreigner? Or would I be able to find my way around a new place, uh, looking at a map in a foreign language? Or how would I know how to make my new Japanese neighbor feel welcome? Maybe offer a person some kohi, being coffee. Or, uh, you know, is my knowledge so limited that I think Spanish music is only about Enrique Iglesias and Fonzi and whatever MTV decides to telecast? And then why do Italians fling their hands around so much when they speak? 
So learning a foreign language, I must say, can seriously damage your ignorance. And just like reading, it opens our minds, it broadens our horizons, and it sensitizes us to customs, traditions, cuisines, ways of thinking that are sometimes unknown to us because of our social conditioning, what we are surrounded by, what we've grown up knowing. Of course, all living creatures have uh, their modes of communication, but what differentiates us humans from that is our ability to learn foreign languages. And dare I say that as an Indian, I have an even bigger advantage of being adept at picking up languages, be it local languages or foreign languages with equal ease. And all of this arises from our history of invasions and the consequent cultural influences that, left, that were left behind. And to me, this is where the essence of language actually lies. It is, you know, uh, Narain spoke, uh, sorry, uh, Hari spoke of it opening doors. And I always say it is our window into a, to a culture that is probably very different from the one I'm a part of. And probably it's, it's possible also that it's very similar to what I experience. Okay, and it's it. If I were to draw an analogy, it would be like this long distance train journey that I'm on, and I meet a whole lot of interesting people along the way. Okay, uh, different mindsets, different thought processes, different outlooks on life, different uh, approaches to uh, circumstances and crises, and this is that uh, this language is that magic carpet that takes us to this whole new world out there waiting to be discovered. Uh, now, what if we took this intangible asset and gave it a practical spin to take it to a whole new level of learning and understanding? So back in the late 20th century, which was about when I was learning the language, foreign language as well, most of us learned foreign languages to to either teach it or to join the uh, you know the indian foreign services and of course right until this day these two lines of work continue to be high on the list of what do you do with a foreign language and of course i was inspired by my teacher mom and this, i had this immense fascination for chalk and blackboard uh, so from a very young age, I knew I wanted to teach. And boy, am I glad I discovered French literature and culture because that sealed the deal for me. Then um, as my journey continued as a lecturer, I witnessed a lot of parents dissuading their children from learning a foreign language because, well, it would take away your focus from that you know, from becoming a doctor or an engineer or a scientist or a chartered accountant, or it would be a distraction of sorts from that prized MBA or that IT degree, which would hold them in good stead when it came to the future, even if that future meant just finding your spouse. Um, parents often saw no scope in learning a foreign language and uh, I think quite a few generations even believe that. Some people still do believe that. Until what was just a buzzword back then in the 90s became a common reality that we all have to face and had to face and until now, which was globalization. The world shrinking to a global village made foreign trade more conducive. Then, thanks to the advent of the internet, to which we owe a lot of gratitude, especially today in the world of online schooling and social media, social networking and work from home, uh, we had so many global companies making their entry into, company, into countries that were probably only heard of in the news or seen in newspapers probably. And many of these giants stepped into foreign lands to set up businesses in countries like our own, where they identified potential. 
And so we needed more people to facilitate communication between the two parties, which were foreigners to each other. And thus grew the demand for translators and interpreters who until then were probably flourishing mainly in the tourism industry as foreign language guides come interpreters or they must have worked at embassies and consulates. And as industries grew, requirements grew and this language bridge needed broadening because we had to connect the west to the east, the north to the south. We had to go across the equator and time zone, travel through time zones. And today with markets growing across the globe, foreign language has started to play an important role in understanding the people we work with as much as what a job or a client requires from us. And all this I speak from the perspective of a corporate um, person in the corporate world now. The demand for foreign language experts has grown manifold in the last 15 years to two decades, I would say, and it continues to grow. In fact, the branches have, have spread so far and wide into domains we didn't even know existed at one time. And while parts of Europe continue to dominate the economic world, the Middle East and Asia are a force to reckon with. So, um, you know, today you don't always need to travel or move base to another country to work for a company that has its uh, headquarters in, uh, you know, across the oceans. Uh, all you need is an in-depth knowledge probably of the language and you combine that with any skill you have. And what you've done is you've taken an asset and you've made so much more of it for yourself, whether it is business analysis or technology consultancy or developing and maintaining of applications, whether you're looking to study marine biology or pursue a genetic research in Sweden, probably aeronautical engineering is your forte or you want to pursue an MBA in France. Maybe the dream is to learn music in a conservatory in Austria or Russia, or maybe a degree course in mechanical engineering is calling you to Japan. The opportunities are endless across this large spectrum, from art to architecture to a solution architect, a research scientist, a rocket scientist, a data scientist a white collared banker, a cordon bleu chef, or a sommelier. You take your passion, you garnish it with foreign language, and voila, you make of your career a piece de resistance. I could wax eloquent about the relevance of foreign languages in today's day and age in every sphere, and especially in the corporate domain. Um, but I will conclude by saying it is a means to an end and also an end to a means. Studying foreign languages is a cross-cultural learning when we don't just acquire meanings, context and nuances of words, but in understanding the etymology and common roots of languages, we gain perspective into an entire philosophy of a people. Now, don't you agree that would go a long way in understanding the people we work with, our colleagues overseas? And let's be honest, haven't we felt warmer towards someone who spoke our language, even when we crossed the border to uh, for work? So you can imagine the kind of impact we would create in our workspaces if we leveraged our knowledge of foreign language, uh, which gives you that edge over everyone else, okay, and, and makes you an empathetic person as well. And in doing so, you will be a part of this global community that is building bridges across border and making a terrific difference. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Madam Deirdre, for enlightening us about how foreign language is today a skill, a skill very much in demand today and a skill that will be an absolute necessity in the workplace tomorrow. Thank you, Patriarcha. It is part of a cultural relationship which we wish to build with an international, with our international clients. And thank you also for speaking to our participants about the scope of learning a foreign language. It is very clear that learning a foreign language is not just an education on its own. Those who are learning a foreign language can actually enhance their position in their particular domains, opening new opportunities in the global community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sujata. And thank thanks, you. Madam Jyoti. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Deirdre. It was very, very interesting. And thank you for your time. Do stay back. My pleasure. Uh, and, uh, until the end. Thank you so much. Okay, now on to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Deepak Kalivaradan. Uh, Mr. Deepak is a Spanish language specialist. He learned Spanish at the Spanish Institute. Instituto Hispania of Bangalore, and he has been working in the foreign language domain since 2010. Mr. Deepak has worked in different companies across various domains like banking, accounts, and finance, pharma, etc. He has also been tutoring school students for many years. A great welcome to Mr. Deepak. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope my voice is crystal clear. Is it? Okay, yeah. Thanks. It is. So, uh, firstly, pardon? It is clear. Please go ahead. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, firstly, I would like to extend my gratitude to uh, uh, for providing me an, an opportunity to be part of this forum where I can connect with a lot of like-minded people and also to share uh, the pros and cons of um, learning a foreign language. So, uh, firstly, I just extend my uh, gratitude for uh, inviting me to this forum. Thank you. And uh, special thanks to Jyoti ma'am and uh, the Bangalore Central University for having me here. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, and today I'm going to share um, with the forum the importance and requirement of uh, learning a foreign language and the competency that it has in the uh, market of Bangalore today. So uh, first, uh, let me start uh, with a brief introduction of uh, the background that I have and um, the, the path that I crossed so far, so that uh, you get an idea where I am heading to and where I started. So you get a clear picture. So I, uh, Deepak, uh, I've been working in this foreign language domain since uh, 2010. And uh, like it's already uh, pointed out that I worked across uh, different sectors. So uh, from banking to uh, accounts and finance to um, now in the pharma industry. So uh, I, I never uh, had an idea that I would start somewhere and I reach the company that I'm working now because uh, that is a specialty that language can uh, give you. It, it, it enables uh, it enables you to do a multiple things and it opens out to a world that you never thought that was there. So uh, uh, say for example, I, uh, my background initially, uh, I was an uh, engineering graduate. I graduated in information technology uh, in the year 2008. And uh, right then, if uh, people could uh, remember, it was the time when recession hit the industry. Across, uh, let's say, across business, across domains, jobs were uh, lost, and then there were uh, not many openings for people to start with when you are fresh out of college. So back then, I had uh, so much trouble finding a job as an uh, engineer in the IT sector. And uh, later, it took me some time to realize that uh, programming is not my cup of tea and I'm never meant for uh, 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 the programming sector, at least. But I never knew that uh, IT had a lot of things to offer than just doing the programming code. So, uh, but I didn't realize. So I had to give up on the IT sector and uh, 
i was looking forward to learning something special and grabbing something for sure that will uh, help me establish a good uh, what say not just with uh, prospect of earning money but also to see as a long term career so that's when um, i immediately looked up to uh, a, a two three friends of mine who have uh, who had learned language back then and they started their career as a language specialist so to be uh, specific they have started learning french so uh, i am from pondicherry so people have uh, started learning french from alliance française there and uh, immediately they ended up uh, in a job like uh, uh, it's easy for them to get in a job in banking sector back then uh, in companies like uh, societe generale or uh, hsbc so they were recruiting in mass number so uh, i also saw that as a promising start so even i started learning a language uh, and after a while few of my friends came back to me uh, uh, lending out help saying uh, deepak please do not let your education uh, uh, go for a toss you have done engineering and uh, uh, do not go into the language just for the sake of uh, the money that it is uh, offering as an attractive uh, path then by that time when they came came back to me i already had gone too far to look back and uh, i started enjoying the job i am doing i started uh, seeing and there was like i told you uh, there was so many opportunities just not working with a particular sector but you name the sector language is always there so i saw that and i had a very tough time convincing my friends back then but now when they uh, make contact with me they are very uh, uh or say i can say they are very convinced uh, with the decision that i have taken and they take pride in telling okay i have a friend who speaks french spanish and what not uh, so it 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 comes as a pride element also just to have a knowledge of uh, uh, anything foreign uh, to the indian market so so that that's how uh, i started and uh, i have just given you a background of uh, how things worked out for me better uh, when it came to the language uh, uh, part so now i'll uh, give you a brief of uh, why should you learn a foreign language and how can you start learning a foreign language with what confidence you can move forward so uh, there are two main things that you can uh, uh, what's a keep in mind um, when you are about to begin or when you advise someone to start a career in foreign language so uh, two uh, important point the first one being you can specialize in whatever uh, studies or domains be it uh, uh, engineering to uh, commerce to uh, accounts and finance to uh, medicine whatever you can specialize in whatever studies and uh, domain the academics that there are so that is the first point and then you can learn a language to add to the already existing expertise so this adds an edge over others so this is one first point and the second one you can specialize in the language itself and later you can dive into any domain that you wanted to get into um seeing uh, that you can multiply your uh, career perspective so uh, there are two ways of approaching the language domain so the first being you master in whichever domain you are friendly with you have a promising career with and then multiply your choices with the language and the second being you master the language and you have the opportunity to get into any sector any domain whichever you want to reach to so me being an engineer uh, engineering graduate i never dreamt that i would end up in a pharma company and i'm working as a translator for the pharma company now so that is the uh, extent that you can go explore when you have the language uh, when you add the language bit to your career so the two ways that you can approach the language is these two and why should you uh, consider learning a foreign language uh, to go into detail so uh, what it offers when you know a language that is foreign what it offers to someone uh, like indians so uh, you have job opportunities in schools colleges 
embassies that the countries belong to you can easily end up in a corporate mnc multinational companies you can explore opportunities in tourism sector and also few other institutes depending on your uh, choice so all the areas are actually touched so that is the best thing that can happen with language and um now the foreign language not the foreign language the foreign countries interest towards asia pacific and to be very particular in india is huge and they have invested so much money bringing their companies to uh, a country like india because we have the best uh, minds uh, disclaimer but we can easily say we are one of the best minds that the world have as a world has so uh, so the, they're seeing that uh, investment and it is all uh, what say directly uh, coming our way so the opportunities are extensive and it's for us to just grab them so for that the enabling tool is easily language one of the enabling tools the most effective that is available in the market is a foreign language uh, knowledge so like i already told you uh, let us now i i belong to the uh, corporate background so now uh, let me give you a overview of what mnc is the multinational company is have to offer uh, to someone who has mastered a language so uh, if you take into consideration multinational companies take for example a abc company that has uh, operations uh, across countries so when i say across countries so they easily want to do business with that country and there is always a job opening for anyone who knows that language and the services that they offer the the, uh, the services or the operations we call it so is across industries so take for example a bank so uh, uh, if it is a abc bank it might have its operation in india in france in uk in germany in japan so depending on the uh, the the market the base that they have in a particular country they have n number of opportunities for the speaker of that particular language so uh, it is uh, always a very uh, fruitful career that uh, a language can uh, give to its candidates so uh, so the mncs and again uh, uh, back in those days uh, uh, if we are to talk about uh, uh, the scenario that existed 10 years back so 10 years back um, anything apart from the uh, mainstream which is uh, it sector or medicine or uh, the cas uh, so anything apart from that is uh, is not looked upon as a very good uh, career choice uh, to be chosen so um, uh, we easily classified it as a call center jobs or uh, uh, they never understood the real meaning of business process outsourcing so uh, once again uh, I, i just want to i just want to get an acknowledgement that uh, i am still connected to the meeting ah yeah okay fine thank you thank you sandeep yes so uh, so yeah uh, if i had to uh, talk about the scenario that we had uh, 10 years back uh, so anything apart from the mainstream medicine or engineering to ca uh, anything apart from that is was not uh, seen as a respectable job they didn't have a clear idea as to uh what the bpo industry can offer they they always uh, thought that it is a call center job and even uh, many of my friends told me after you learn a language all you get to do is speak to someone over the phone and then uh, uh, do a call center job in uh, different shifts in their time zones but it is never the factor and uh, they never understood that europe as a continent has a lot to offer when it comes to the business process outsourcing so uh so that has totally uh, it it has changed a lot over the last 10 years and now we can very clearly say that it has grown strong uh, to independently as uh, a domain itself so you can very well recommend learning a language as a domain to start a career and to be there established forever so uh, that kind of growth we have seen in the last 10 years 
so uh, that is very commendable actually so it just that uh, when we get uh, into forums like this we can actually discuss the existing situation to a level of perfection that it reaches the, the right people so they don't need to uh, think twice when they have to think about learning a language and uh, so uh, all these are pluses and then if uh, we have to consider another simple example uh, say uh, uh, there are it friends of mine who are reaching out to me saying uh, deepak can you please uh, help me i need to understand i need to study german i asked them why you are already in the it sector and why do you want to learn german he, he wants to add that extra portion to that uh, particular profile as a skill set so that he can have a better opportunity in the in the company that he is working with or to move to that country itself so that is one simple thing that comes with the language so it 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 enables you to do things that you can never imagine of so so this is one simple example of uh, how the extra edge uh, plays an important role uh, in uh, the language world and then um, say for example uh, uh, apart from the uh, it sector uh, there are a lot of jobs out there but the job market is very competent and for you to stand out from the normal crowd you need something special and you need something unique and you need something very promising efficient so easy for you to pick and easy for you to reach that level is simply choose a language so that is another uh, what say a pros another prospect which is not being uh, uh, what say explored by many but uh, i definitely wanted to underline that uh, factor and uh, apart from this uh, the pros and the cons that a language has to offer and i, I am coming to uh, my own uh, specialized language spanish uh, in a bit but uh, this applies to all the languages uh, that are foreign to us so that is uh, the reason i wanted to cover the pros and cons in this section only so uh, so what what the language offers to you uh, when you learn a new language what does it offer so uh, i don't want to get uh, into detail and it is very beautifully explained uh, by previous uh, speakers uh, the guest speakers the chief uh, guest speaker everyone that the culture and the local practices of other countries you get familiar with it gives you immense uh, uh, joy and there are a lot of things to explore so that is definitely the first and the foremost thing and as an individual you enrich yourself with uh, uh so much thing as in without your uh, knowledge and without your realization you get to learn and grow as an individual and uh, what say uh, it happens over a period of time and you later go to a point where you enjoy your growth personally so that is one thing and then say for example um, you have any particular hobby from reading books okay so uh, possibly you learn french you learn spanish or german then it opens up to a whole new world of learning for you so you easily can reach out to uh, uh, picking uh, books or literatures from the particular language and then uh, uh, build so much on your hobby and convert it into what not so that is one thing uh, the hobbies also can be made uh, uh, what say uh, fruitful more fruitful and then um, say i'll share something which i have experienced and i am still doing say i i uh, do i have this habit of writing diaries so uh, back then uh, it started at a very uh, early age for me like i believe in my 11th grade or 12th grade i started writing my diary and i still have uh, all those diaries uh, lined up probably for uh, uh, 15 years or uh, so i'm still writing diaries so it just uh, a uh, hobby i can say that i was having so initially i was writing in my own uh, native language regional language that was tamil and uh, once it so happened that uh, uh, my mom uh, happened to just clean and she turned pages and then uh, she gave me a big uh, lecture and what not she even uh, gave me a big uh, beating with all that and later at uh, uh, immediately after i started writing in english and then uh, when i went into college then i started writing in french though 
it, uh, with mistakes for sure. And later, I started learning Spanish and I started writing in Spanish. And the last uh, uh, six, seven years, I've been writing the diary in Spanish. So all that, uh, I would say, it, it, it is all anything extra that you can uh, enjoy as a person uh, to cherish, to uh, grow uh, yourself. Uh, uh, so the, this is one such a simple uh, and very uh, trivial thing that I uh, wanted to mention. And uh, uh, the pros, you have a lot of pros and uh, what say, uh, it comes out better when we have a debate, but uh, fine, I'll end the pros here, the, uh, the cons. And uh, to talk about the cons, I don't uh, clearly see a con in learning a um, foreign language. And one thing that is common and it is hap happening to any individual who starts to learn is doubting themselves whether uh, learning this uh, language would help me or after having started learning, probably you do uh, A1 level or A2 level and then you want to go back thinking, no, uh, this is not my cup of tea, I have to give up on this. There, that I would point out as a con and how to improve that is you have a lot of ways to improve from connecting to native speakers, connecting to the like-minded people, connecting to a crowd which uh, enriches your uh, uh, learning, uh, connecting to a crowd, staying in touch with people who encourages you to learn and then uh, Online sources are there, videos. If you are into uh, listening music, you can learn through music. You can uh, read, you can listen to part, uh, say podcasts online. And then uh, uh, you can read uh, news online. And there are several other ways to improve. And all that you need to do is have that extra push. And you are there. So you, even you can convert that single existing con into a pro later at some point uh, during your learning the foreign language. So uh, that is one thing. And now uh, I'll come to why learn Spanish uh, and what uh, Spanish has to offer when it comes to the job markets. So uh, Spanish is uh, easily the third most spoken language in the world and uh, about 20 plus Spanish speaking countries uh, from Spain to all the countries in the Latin America and 44 plus countries are uh, officially speaking uh, Spanish as a language. So uh, why do we want to uh, underline this uh, number of Spanish speaking countries is when I mean more countries, it is simply more business to be understood and more services to offer and uh, more companies and more uh, operations, more jobs. So. Uh, with Spain offering uh, about 60 to 70 percent of the jobs available in the market, uh, the other jobs come from countries like Mexico and Argentina and few other countries like Chile and all that. So uh, apart from these, you can also uh, explore the other uh, industries like I already pointed out. Uh, you can explore uh, uh, opportunities with working in schools to colleges to embassies to corporates. Uh, to tourism, to uh, institutes and uh, all that. And uh, uh, one uh, thing that uh, all these uh, major languages, which are uh, uh, French, Japanese, Korean, Spanish, German, uh, all and even Portuguese, uh, all these major uh, languages, what they have to offer is uh, a very attractive and efficient returns. So uh, when you are investing time, money, effort and all of yourself, the, the return that the market or the job gives you should be effective and attractive. And that is a promised return when you learn a language like Spanish. And uh, apart from this, uh, oh, you can about languages. Hello. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so they have so many oh, top other oh, energies in Syria, I'm sorry. Hello, sorry, can I, uh, the message is not uh, loud enough. 
uh, Jyoti ma'am, or someone from the admin, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I think me. someone's mic was unmuted by mistake. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I thought the message was for me. So. Oh, sir, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, apart from uh, all that the MNCs and the job markets uh, have to offer you, you might as well explore the option of uh, teaching to kids uh, in your free time. You can teach kids to uh, uh, different uh, set of people. That teaching option is easily uh, uh, one can explore. Another is uh, the interpretation. So uh, there are people uh, from across uh, businesses who travel countries for different reasons. So you can hang out with the native speaker and uh, you can help them uh, move around in our country uh, regarding uh, whatever business they come with. And uh, that way of communicating again uh, opens up uh, to a larger contact and uh, uh, immense experience to cherish with. So I have done it in a, uh, a couple of instances uh, with one of my friends from Spain. And uh, I really had a very good time from discussing uh, business to personal life to uh, the culture and the food and what not. Uh, how the world used to be in uh, uh, that part of the world, uh, the country, the, 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 uh, the Spanish country. Uh, and then again, uh, uh, with different uh, clients, interactions, so all that is possible uh, in, a, uh, in a foreign language uh, uh, controlled uh, medium. So, so uh, I believe uh, with all this, I have given you uh, more insights of uh, uh, what uh, foreign language uh, learning would help you achieve, uh, help you enjoy, help you grow as a person. So uh, here again, I would uh, uh, thank the other uh, guest speakers for having shared uh, so much of insights into uh, the, uh, the domain and the subject. And thanks for uh, hosting me here today. And uh, for any doubts and uh, any uh, insight that you would further need, I, all, I encourage the viewers to reach out to uh, the host uh, Jodi Ma'am or uh, the uh, Bangalore City University or reach out to me. I'm very glad uh, to, uh, what say, to help you and answer your queries. And uh, again, thanks for having me here. Ciao, buenas tardes. Thank you very much, Dr. Asadeep. Thank you very much, Mr. Deepak, for that very informative talk. You spoke about employment opportunities existing across all domains. It was very interesting to learn how you built up your career as a translation specialist, having specialized in the IT field. And the key, as you explained, is to explore the opportunities available where a foreign language can add value to the main career choice. Thank you very much. And now we will move on to the next speaker, uh, Mr. Sandeep Bogavili. Mr. Sandeep Bogavili works as a French language translator at a multinational company in Hyderabad and also as a French language faculty at Alliance Francaise of Hyderabad. Mr. Sandeep completed his Bachelor of Technology in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Noor College of Engineering and his Master of Technology, VLSI System Design from Aurora's Engineering College. Mr. Sandeep simultaneously obtained his diploma in French language at the Vivekananda Institute of Languages and later obtained his French DELF C1 and DELF C2 certifications at Alliance Francaise of Hyderabad. Mr. Sandeep worked as assistant professor in the department of ECE at MBSR Engineering College then as French faculty at Vivekananda Institute of Foreign Languages, Hyderabad. He also worked as French language specialist in DMB Business and Market Research Private Limited and as a French language expert at Trigen Software Limited. Mr. Sandeep's achievements include winning an appreciation certificate in the literary competition Plume d'Or 2011, conducted by the Association for the Defense a French language under the patronage of the French Ministry of Culture and Communication. 
He has also secured admission in the e-master's course for ME and MPhil French at IFLU, Hyderabad, and has written articles for the student French journal of Alliance Francaise, La Perle de Hyderabad. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Mr. Sandeep. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for being here. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Bangalore City University and uh, Madam Jyoti Venkatesh uh, for providing me this opportunity to speak about my career and the experience that I had. And uh, thanks for the introduction, Madam Sujata. So basically, my presentation uh, focuses on the role of a translator in a multinational corporation. So that's the basic idea behind my presentation. And definitely I would also touch upon the points related uh, to translation and as well as the importance of learning a French language, importance of learning a foreign language these days. So I have a presentation. I would just walk you through this presentation. Uh, so just give me a second. <clears throat> I hope my presentation is visible. So uh, before I could start with, I would also love to uh, narrate a small anecdote that I was recounted many years ago when I was a student, when I was a student of a foreign language. So this basically answers this question why a foreign language. So this is the background. This story is all about a house cat uh, whose daily routine was to chase mice every day. Now, one day it, it decided to get rid of the mice for good. So it chased them into the rat hole and then lay in wait outside the mouse hole for them to come out. Now, hours passed by and the mice were really desperate to come out, but they couldn't. All of a sudden an idea struck to them. They have attended some courses at an Academy of Languages few months ago and they have mastered the language of hounds. Now they thought this is the right time to deploy their second language skills and they started howling in hound. Now the cat, which was waiting tenaciously at the rat hole was startled, it was taken aback and it ran into panic. And then it thought that there was a creator nearby ready to attack. And then it retreated leaving the mice at peace. Even though it's a fantasy tale, Okay, what's the takeaway from this story? It's that a second language or a foreign language can be a life savior. So was it in my case as well. And all the other speakers uh, uh, who spoke till now, I think for them also, it was a turning point in their life when they started learning a second language. Now, apart from that, what are the advantages of a foreign language? what are the advantages that a foreign language offers to us? So maybe it would be a little repetitive because so many speakers spoke about the same thing, but I would try to relate it to my experience and bring it to you. Firstly, a foreign language is a new portal. It's a portal to a new world. For example, uh, 15 years ago, uh, when I started learning French and for someone who had never been to Europe, this was a portal to a new world for me. I got acquainted to the European culture, to the various European languages, the food, their art forms, traditions, the way how they dress, eating habits, superstitions, and so on and so forth. It was such an enriching experience. That was the time when I started becoming more open-minded and my mind was ready to receive everything positive. And when someone is looking for integrating into a new society, for example, there are students in India who would like to pursue their further education abroad. And there are also people who would like to hold a job abroad. For such people, if they start learning a foreign language or the language of the country where they want to be, definitely it would help them. It would make their life smooth and easy. Because the moment you start communicating to them in their own language, they would treat you as one among them and the integration into the society becomes easier. And in my case, when I started learning French, I started rediscovering my own culture and my mother tongue. 
you wouldn't believe me i started drawing analogies between the cultures the european culture and indian culture and even the languages and i was quite surprised to see that there were striking similarities especially in grammatical patterns or maybe cultural aspects so this was a very enlightening experience for me to learn a foreign language and not only this it would definitely take your creativity to the next level and you would also definitely improve your cognitive skills that is the way how you think the way how you take decisions the way how you formulate your ideas and with a foreign language learning your memory also becomes strong no matter your age and you would also develop multitasking skills all these things happen at a cognitive level so unknowingly you would definitely be a better person when you start learning a second language or a foreign language and last but not the least a foreign language would definitely open doors to new career opportunities when i say new career opportunities it would mean something which we couldn't even think of few decades ago for example a decade ago the job of a youtuber was just to upload some content on youtube maybe for the purpose of entertainment but these days the job of a youtuber is quite serious i personally follow so many youtubers online who have mastered various languages and they travel across the globe and they publish content on youtube periodically where they introduce to us exotic cultures all around the world so it is quite a serious job what they do so for someone who would like to stand apart from the crowd and looking for new career opportunities foreign language is definitely an option for you now the job of a translator or an interpreter which was limited to uh, the government sector or tourism industry few decades ago now the role of translator or an interpreter is much wanted in multinational corporations so i would like to draw your attention here when i say multinational corporations there are so many mnc's across the world and they provide services to various clients across the world so now you see that there is a very uh, it is uh, very necessary for them to expand their clientele enter into contracts with them now you would ask me what are these companies which companies are they so maybe this slide would answer your question so on the slide you would see more than 100 companies and they are all multinationals they are operating in various countries all over the world and i'm i'm sure that you would know definitely many of them so amazon accenture wipro so in the list that i have just put up you might identify american giants european companies indian companies asian companies every company across the world would like to expand its clientele few decades ago entering into a contract uh, uh, with a client who is coming from a different country or from a different continent was not really easy because there was always a communication barrier but now thanks to translators and interpreters this barrier is lifted now they can easily expand their clientele by taking the help of these translators so most of the multinational companies would have a team of translators who would cater to their requirements whenever a foreign client is involved a client from a different continent or a different country is involved definitely the capability is deployed and uh, you would ask me uh, if all these mnc's recruit uh, human translators what are their roles and responsibilities what are they expected to do now the slide would sum up the roles and responsibilities of a translator to begin with because the word translator means to translate something and what would they translate they would translate documents which are very critical from the client perspective they could be request for proposals request for quotations minutes of the meetings user guides company capsules solution documents legal agreements and contracts and so on and so forth i can give you a, an entire list of the documents that you are expected to translate as a translator and your job wouldn't end there you would also need to interpret interpret over telephone or when the client visits the service provider so usually the clients visit the service providers from time to time to keep tabs on the progress of the project 
they would just like to meet the service provider to check how the project is going on. So when the clients do visit the service provider, definitely there would be a communication gap, which is filled by the translators or the interpreters. They would organize events, even outside the company. They would also prepare presentations and do the present, uh, they would prepare and make the presentations. Anything is possible. So thanks to translators and interpreters that the companies can have their business run smoothly. And if you are already a software engineer or an accountant or a business administrator, and then you have acquired a foreign language proficiency, then there's nothing like that. You would be definitely recruited quicker than a software engineer or a simple translator, because there are certain projects which would need the competencies in both the domains, and that would definitely help them gain a lot of time. When someone has to go through a translator, there is a turnaround time. But if the same person has a foreign language proficiency, then you would save a lot on time. That is the reason bilingual software engineers or accountants or business administrators or any other role is highly appreciated in the market. And there are certain projects and there are certain companies which would also require multilingual support so you might, the company might be tied up uh, with a client which operates in a continent uh, in, the, in the countries which are a group of nations. For example, if someone who is already speaking French can also pick up Italian. So the requirement for this kind of resource is also present in the market. Someone who speaks French and Italian, someone who speaks Spanish and Portuguese someone who speaks German and Dutch. So the language learning doesn't stop at one language sometimes. Sometimes you go further and you pick up a second language and you become a multilingual resource. And this kind of resource is very uh, appreciated and very much wanted in the market. And there are certain projects and companies where you may have to train the entire team so that the communication becomes easier among the team with the onshore team and also with the client. When uh, this is required, then a translator becomes a language trainer. He may have to uh, train the entire team of uh, entire team to communicate in the foreign language. So the role of translator in a multinational corporation is not just limited to translation of documents. He is asked to interpret. He might be asked to exercise some technical roles and might, might even uh, provide support in many languages and also can train people to learn the language. Now, one question might cross your mind now. There are so many open source tools and machines available in the market which can do translation as well as interpretation. Thanks to technology, we have so many things to do. But why don't the companies prefer a tool or a machine? This is a practical question that uh, uh, everyone has because whenever I introduce myself as a translator to the outside world, the very first question that I confront is, why are you required by the company? We have so many tools and machines in the market. Now that's a very practical question. So when I speak about a tool or a machine, it comes with its own challenges. First of all, translation is something which is purely context-based. So if you context has to be provided and the context has to be identified. Unfortunately, a tool or a machine cannot identify the context all by itself without any human intervention. Uh, and there is a joke which is quite popular among the community of translators. It goes something like this. Uh, someone asks a translator, how much time do you need to fix a bulb? And the answer given by the translator is, it depends on the context. Now, what does this mean? Uh, that means to say that, a con uh, that context is very important for a translator. Uh, maybe he was wondering when someone asks him to fix a bulb, does it mean to fix a bulb to a holder? Or does it mean to repair a bulb which is gone? Or to come up with a new bulb, fixing something? So context is something which is very crucial for the job of translation. And unfortunately, a tool cannot replace. And second important thing is there might be some quality issues in the source text. There could be some grammatical errors. 
there could be uh, spelling mistakes or there could be any other flaws so this kind of a text where the output would also be of the same quality so you cannot expect wonders but when it's a human translator he would have the knowledge or the wisdom to correct the flaws in the source text and then come up with a uh a uh, flawless uh, output translation hence a human translator is always required even though there are many tools available in the market and the foremost thing is data confidentiality remember that whenever a translator in a multinational organization so my context is always multinational corporation because they are the service providers who always work with the foreign language clients they don't speak english but they speak in their own language okay so when they give some data to be processed by the service provider it's the property of the client and which is not to be exposed to the public and which is quite confidential and sensitive now there are certain people who would use the open source translation tools uh, where you copy paste the text required for translation now remember that all these open source tools uh, would store the data for a certain period of time let us take the example of the google translator in case you are trying to paste some text which is related to the client which is highly confidential remember that the data would be stored in the google service for about a week that means to say that you are exposing the data so which is clearly not appreciated by a client that might this might uh, lead to serious issues and even breaching of the project of the contract hence data confidentiality keeping data confidentiality in mind a human translator is always preferred by a multinational corporation and remember that tool accuracy can never measure up to the client's expectations a, uh, the accuracy that can be promised by a tool could be uh, 80% or 90% depending upon the quality of the source text and the, its complexity as well and a tool might definitely not understand if there are any idiomatic expressions and figures of speech maybe certain uh, idiomatic expressions which are frequently used might be understood by the tool but not all the figures of speech and idiomatic expressions given all these challenges i would say that a translator is very much wanted in a multinational environment and for a translator uh, i am a translator so what is the gain on personal front for me so on a personal front also you gain so many things first of all i get the opportunity to interact uh, with natives across the world and for example i am a french translator and i interact with the french speaking clients and they can be from any continent in the world as as french is uh, was spoken in almost all the continents uh, the clients could be from the european continent from the african continent from the australia or even the american continent so i get this beautiful opportunity to interact with the natives on day to day basis who would use their own accent and their own regional variants so this is something which i can never experience outside in that case i might have to uh plan a world tour which is not possible and secondly i even get the opportunity to hone my skills related to word processing applications because i work on so many documents in different formats it could be a word document it could be an excel sheet or it could be a powerpoint presentation it could be a visual document and so on and so forth so when you are working as a translator in an mnc i uh, you would uh, indirectly uh, acquire many other skills and sometimes if your project or the company needs you would also be provided training in the technical domains for example if your uh, project is into sap or java some kind of training would be even provided to you so that the training uh, so that the translation output is error free so sometimes even you get to go to the client country to attend knowledge transfer sessions so all these things are nothing but the advantages on the personal front and last but not the least the as per the market uh, uh, benchmark uh, usually translators are offered attractive packages salary packages so this is what you gain on personal front as well 
Now, after having spoken about uh, the role of a translator in a multinational company, now I would want to advocate why French. Till now, I have been saying that uh, you can pick up any language that suits your profession or that suits your interest, and you can uh, start learning it. But now I would give you two strong reasons why you have to learn French. Uh, because I am a French uh, translator, I would love to advocate this language. The first and foremost thing. Now this particular slide will answer your question. Now I have put up some words that you use in English, but which have French origin. Remember that French and English belong to two different language families and they have nothing in common. But when you open up an English dictionary and a French dictionary, you would see a lot of words which are similar and the English words would have French origin. How is it possible? It's way back in 11th century when Normans, the people who used to inhabit, uh, inhabit the northern part of France, they invaded England and they occupied England for about four centuries. And when England was under them for about four centuries, English language absorbed a lot of French vocabulary. And now in modern English, you see that more than 50% of the vocabulary is uh, similar to French or it is uh, directly or indirectly derived from French. Now, why I, I want to speak about this is because when you start learning a language, vocabulary, learning vocabulary, memorizing vocabulary is the basic exercise that everyone has to do. And I'm sure that it is not a very fun-filled process, okay, when you have to memorize something and when you have no clue how to memorize a word, you would struggle and you would have difficulties in retaining the word. But I would say, but for French, it's the other way around. Learning vocabulary in French is a fun-filled activity rather than a mind-boggling task. Why? Here are some examples. And I'm sure that every one of you would know what these uh, words mean in English. Okay, let us take the very first word, which is sauté. So someone who is into cooking or uh, the culinary uh, domain would definitely know what this means. So saute is nothing but the process of cooking some food on a very high heat in a shallow pan with very little amount of oil. Now imagine the same thing and now you have added few mustard seeds. What would happen to them? They would start jumping and this is what exactly what it means in French. Saute. The verb saute means to jump. And this is what, that is how the word came into existence, sauté, the way of cooking this way. And the next word that I have put up here is restaurant, restaurant. So it is also derived from the French verb se restaurer, which means to restore one's energy. So restaurant happens to be a place where you get to eat or drink something to restore your energy. And coupon is another word that you use in your day-to-day -day conversations. So coupon is nothing but a part that is cut off from the ticket and which contains your details. So this comes from the verb coupe, which means to cut. And the next important word that I would like to present you is denim. Denim is the tissue that, uh, that was first invented or uh, fabricated in the city of France, which is called neem. And something which comes from neem is the neem. So the English pronounce it as denim. And the next word that I want to discuss about is mod gauge. It is derived from two uh, different French words, more and gage, which means death and pledge. Now you would wonder what it has to do with the actual word mod gauge. So the logic behind mod gauge is that you pledge something in exchange for money. And when this money is repaid completely, the pledge dies. That is what it's called more mod gauge. And definitely, I'm sure that you all know this expression, deja vu, the uh, feeling of uh, having experienced something uh, already before, which might not be true. So in French, this expression means already seen. So you see how these expressions have been uh, derived or they have been borrowed from French. And this makes English all the more beautiful. And now just imagine how beautiful could French itself can be. And the next word is puny. Puny refers to something which is inferior in rank. 
Okay. So basically, this comes from the word queenie, which means born later. So something which is born later is not completely developed or relatively less developed to the first one. So this particular word would definitely mean inferior in rank. And pansies. So someone who is quite acquainted to the European culture would definitely know about this flower. Usually these flowers are offered to someone to, exp uh, to express that the person is in your thoughts. Okay, so uh, basically this comes from the French word penser and it, has, and it has become pansy in English. And I have also put up the image of these flowers and if you look at them, they might remind you the face of a person who is seriously thinking about something, isn't it? So you can easily correlate uh, things when you start learning French. And then I have also put up this adjective brilliant, which is derived from the French verb briller, which means to dazzle or to shine. So a student or someone who, have, who is shining with knowledge is brilliant. Now uh, I can go on for hours and hours and I can give you the etymology of almost 50% of the English vocabulary, which has French origins and it is quite interesting. And in the course of this discovery, you would also stumble upon so many interesting things. So I can definitely say with a lot of confidence that French learning would be so much fun for you. Just imagine even the basic exercise of learning vocabulary is so fun filled. Imagine what can it be with the entire language. The French literature is famous throughout the world. There are so many authors who, are, uh, who have a lot of reputation and they're quite popular. So this is the very first reason that I want to present to you to learn French. And the second one is more from the uh, practical uh, end. That is, as the other speakers have also mentioned that there are so many popular French clients with whom you can work. And I have put up on the slide a few uh, such clients because they all belong to different industries. Like uh, uh, the other speakers said, you can pick up an industry and then you can pick up the language or you can also do it the other way around because French or the other foreign languages are used in almost all the companies and these are the popular French clients that you can think of working with. For example, Renault which is into automobile industry, Societe Generale into financial services, AXA in insurance domain, L'Oreal into cosmetic products, Total and uh, GRT into energies, Sanofi into pharmaceutical, Capgemini in technology services, Limagrain into agriculture. So you would see that the French uh, industry is spread across all the domains and it is spread across all the countries in the world. So when you pick up French as your second language or the foreign language that you want to learn, and I'm sure that there would be no looking back, you would be definitely successful in your career. Just to, I would just uh, like to recount my experience before I end my presentation. I was uh, a student of engineering and I have acquired my master's in engineering in electronics to be precise. And I have worked uh, as an associate professor in a university uh, for about five years. And I was learning French all the way. And then once I started uh, discovering the opportunities and the beauty of the language, I fell in love with it. And then I gave up on my career as an engineer and I switched to French. And I would definitely tell you that I'm very happy now as a French translator, where French has become an integral part of my life. And I'm sure that all, any of the foreign languages will, all, will definitely do the same for you and you would have a great, a great life ahead. On this note, I would like to thank you once again for the patience and uh, for providing me this opportunity to present. And with this, I would say merci beaucoup, thanks a lot and bon soirée. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep. That was very interesting presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you for providing me this opportunity. 
Sujata. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep. Thank you very much. That was a very enlightening session. Uh, thank you for highlighting how a foreign language learner becomes rich culturally and how he becomes aware not only about the new language and culture, but of his own culture also. And your presentation made it clear of the sheer magnitude of the demand for translators in the corporate world and the important role that translators play for the corp uh, companies to be able to communicate with their international clients. And our viewers even got to learn a little bit of French. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, um, we will have uh, two uh, students who will be speaking. Uh, they're going to be giving their inputs. So we'll uh, we will be uh, going students. into a very short break just before the students speak. Okay, okay. Please we'll have a little short break now, just for a couple of minutes. Yeah.
Yes, Sujata. Thank you, ma'am. So now we have uh, two students from our department who are doing their masters. Uh, they would like to share their thoughts. Very good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, Arvin, you are audible. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Jyoti, ma'am. Good afternoon, uh, everybody from the French department and all those who are watching on Zoom or elsewhere on YouTube. Uh, I'm very happy to be given the chance to speak here. So I'm a student of uh, the French department here in Bengaluru City University. And uh, I've been a French language uh, enthusiast, I would say, rather than specialist or anything else for the last eight years. Uh, presently, I have a C1 in French. And it's been an amazing journey for me uh, discovering this beautiful language. Uh, my background is that I had a master's in English uh, from Calgary University. But uh, nevertheless, I was still uh, somewhere lost in the shuffle. I wasn't doing very well in my career. And there were various uh, issues uh, which were plaguing me and I couldn't take things to the next level. Uh, and it was my knowledge of French back then which helped me. And learning French helped me get better even in English for that matter. And uh, as time went on, I discovered more and more interest in learning French and to the extent that English became secondary uh, at a certain point in time. And French is a beautiful language for everybody to learn. So if there's anybody who's listening to me now and wants to learn the language, it's definitely the language to go for. And various participants have already discussed why it is so. I would not like to again mention that. And I'm also very uh, privileged and fortunate to be a part of this department. Uh, right now, thanks to the department as a part of Open Elective, I've also started taking German very seriously. So maybe in a few years time, I can also have some sort of a level in German. And uh, having a postgraduate degree clearly helps with your career. And uh, it can help uh, you get a better job. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, learning a foreign language is essential to discovering yourself furthering your interests even in your chosen field let's say you're an engineer doctor whatever you are mba uh, but if you learn your learn a foreign language trust me you'll get better in your discipline and not just acquire a new language and uh, that is because of various reasons participants have already discussed that that's not something for me to again talk about uh, i'm just very privileged and fortunate to be here today and speaking in front of you and uh, being able to talk and uh, merci beaucoup thank you everyone have a very good day, very good evening. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Arvind. That was a very, um, that was your, your own true experience which you shared with us and that was very interesting, very enlightening. Thank you very much. And now we have uh, another Talk by Hachita Umesh, who's also a master's student here in our department. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, Hachita. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello. Please go okay. ahead. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for giving me a chance to speak, uh, Ms. Sujata ma'am and uh, Jyoti ma'am. So I'm also a student at the Bangalore Central University and I have a medical background in the sense that my parent, my mom's a doctor and my aunt and uncle are too. And they've actually traveled a lot around the world. My aunt and uncle stay in Dubai right now. And you know, my mom's worked in the US for a couple of years. And the one thing that I learned from that is that when you're talking to a patient, it's always better to talk to them in their mother tongue or their language because that makes the patient that much more comfortable talking with you and that opens up, it makes them, that makes them open up and talk more about their problems and nothing is lost in translation. And because of that, like the World Health Organization and all other like Bill Gates, Melinda Foundation, Médecins Sans Frontières, which is also known as Doctor Without Borders, they ask for their volunteers to actually know a lot of global languages. So if they are put anywhere in the world, they're able to communicate and they're able to help these people out to a much better degree than somebody who just knows one or two languages. And hence, 
Um, I think it's really important that, you know, you have a basic understanding of languages, but it also makes a lot of difference to you because you learn about their culture. You learn not about their literature, a lot of other things. Language, it doesn't just mean that, you know, you're learning about some words and writing in something else. You, you know, you sort of take in some of those aspects. And I think that's a really beautiful thing that, you know, we're not just limited by saying that, hey, I don't understand a language. And also the same way that that culture entices us, learning a language also entices us. So I think that's why everyone should consider at least trying out, you know, even if it's not their forte, because it could definitely be something that they enjoy in the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Harshita. Thank you very much, Harshita. That was very, very true. I mean, you would never uh, imagine how learning a foreign language could help a doctor. I mean, look at the world is changing and it is a definite necessity now in all fields that all people know a different foreign language. That is absolutely correct. And you just explained it so well. Thank you from your own experience. Thank you so much. And now we have our final speaker. Um, this is Mr. Karan. He is the Honorable Secretary of the and he has been an inter entrepreneur in the field of semiconductors, power and software business. And now he is promoting the Japanese language in Karnataka, along with other infrastructure development. Mr. Karanth has also played an essential role in organizing this webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Over to you. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sujata for your excellent introduction and also carrying out the whole program so well. Thank you. And my sincere thanks, of course, to Jyoti, Dr. Jyoti Venkatesh, Chairman. She has put a tremendous effort to make this a success. She has been coordinating the matter along with us for the Japanese and also a little on the German side. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity and making this happen, uh, Dr. Venkatesh. And I heard uh, Professor Ingaraj speaking and saying, saying that they want to be a more dynamic university uh, in Bangalore. I've been associated with the Bangalore University for last, since two, 2008. And we had our, also Japan Hubba started here by the help of the Bangalore University uh, earlier, of course, now Bangalore Central University. Now, already the very renowned people like Eric Perol, Akiko Sugita-san, Hubert have spoken importance of learning and having experience in foreign language. I do not wish to talk further on that. I can only say there is no doubt that having the knowledge and able to speak or write and translate even technical thing as spoke by other people is very, very important. I can speak more about the Japanese side. Without the Japanese language being uh, learned, it is not so easy to get a job in the Japanese companies. And even if you get, you will not be able to be promoted so soon or for a long time to come. Yes, of course, I regret I did not learn the Japanese language till now, but that's a story which I don't feel uh, we're talking now, it's already uh, a lot of time has passed. And I heard Hari, Dominic, Deepak, Sandeep speaking about the languages, translation, translator, and technical. I think uh, they have covered all the angles of the benefit of knowing the Japanese, uh, the foreign languages. Of course, you heard uh, Hubert talking about how his life changed by speaking English, which looks very strange for us, but that's the true. So that's anything is a foreign language. And that was a very practical experience, what Hubert uh, Rayla gave all of you. I'm glad I had this opportunity to address you for a few minutes. This was the request from Dr. Jyoti Venkatesh. And I wish all of you a grand success going forward to make foreign language department in Bangalore City University, a real showpiece in the country, like what I see 
JNU does in uh, New Delhi. So maybe we we can do that in South here in uh, Bangalore. And I also wish the MA classes in Japanese, which was there a few years back, uh, can be started again with the help of all of you in the Bangalore Center, Bangalore City University. Thank you very much, and wish you all the good luck. Bye bye. Thank you, Mr. Karan, sir, for your wonderful words. And uh, a hearty thanks to all our eminent speakers for sharing their views, experiences, and very valuable information, which will be uh, very useful for our participants. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, please stay. Uh, we'll be starting the validatory function in just a few minutes. Thank you. So here in the actually uh, in the Uh, first of all, I thank all the speakers who shared their thoughts with us today on this webinar. We have now arrived at the final program of our uh, webinar today, which is the validatory function. And uh, I am uh, very happy to welcome Professor Ramesh, who is our registrar and our registrar evaluation of Bangalore City University, yeah. who has uh, accepted to deliver the valedictory address. Sir, over to you. Uh, we are uh, just waiting for our Dean of Arts, Professor Narsi Murthy, to join us. So uh, maybe we will just wait for a few seconds. But before that, Sujata, please uh, introduce our uh, guest, Professor Ramesh. Thank you. Yes. So I would like to introduce uh, Professor Ramesh B. He is Register Evaluation of Bengaluru City University, Bengaluru. He is also the Professor of the Department of Studies and Research in Social Work, Tumkur University, Tumkur. Mr. Ramesh obtained his PhD in Social Work from Bangalore University in 2002. He has 21 years of teaching, research, and administrative experience in various universities across Karnataka. He served as member of the Academic Council, Tumkur University, and he was His Excellency Governor's nominee for the award of honorary doctorate, Karnataka University in 2017. Mr. Ramesh has made rich contributions for institutional development and good governance in university administration. He established development centers in cluster villages at Kuwempu University in 2009 and 2012, and an innovative photo museum of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and other social reformers at Tumkur University in 2012 and 2015. Mr. Ramesh has written many books and received many prestigious awards and honors. He received the District Kannada Rajotsava Award 2017 by the District Administration, Tumkur Government of Karnataka, and the Adarsh Vidya Saraswati Rashtriya Puraskar in 2018 by the Global Management Council of Ahmedabad, among others. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Oh. 
thank you madam um, good evening to one and all uh, respected uh, chairperson uh, professor jyoti madam jyoti venkatesh and dear colleagues uh, resource persons and participants the chairperson of this uh, today's evening valedictory session professor simurthy sir honorable dean uh, faculty of arts bangalore city university and dear participants at the outset we congratulate uh, professor jyoti venkatesh and madam and his, and her team for organizing this kind of a wonderful uh, program focusing on career opportunities in foreign language skills we all know that after 1980 we have started talking about the globalization in the decade of 1990 the india also actually shifted to the process of globalization from that decade onwards till date we are in the process of globalization the entire uh, the global countries have become uh, in a one connectedness we are talking more, we are now we are talking more about the global village the concept of global village whatever the earlier the walls between the countries were destroyed now we are in the concept of universal village when we are moving towards this when we are interacting each other the country people the mobility when has been increased the significance of foreign language naturally arrived to combat this challenge to fulfill the needs are arise to develop the more and more uh, the global language professionals of course many universities have taken up uh, the responsibility like that since last 20 25 years the department of global language bangalore city university presently the bangalore city university before three years with the bangalore university the department has been serving the department has been uh, grooming many foreign language professionals and contributing to cater the needs it is really a great appreciating thing uh, as we all aware that the significance of global language significance of for skills in global language has been increasing especially in the covid pandemic situation as you all aware that uh, the virtual platform has been becoming mandate is becoming order of the day it is becoming inevitable uh, requirement of every individual every institution in this period again further the significance of global language has been increased we need to prepare a skillful talented a dedicated uh, individuals in the field of uh, global languages so that we can really cater the needs of the global level and also as we all know the language is the uh, ambassador the main ambassador of the culture culture and language goes in a same road they are the two faces of a coin without language culture doesn't exist so when we want to protect our own language and we want to uh, spread the core values in our language the global connectivity is very very important to achieve this global connectivity not only uh, to search for the employment not only uh, to have the external affairs with the neighboring and other countries in the world uh, not only to have the trade and commerce the specially uh, to help each other to have a oneness among the all the countries as uh, our great poem poem for say the universal we need to enhance we need to develop we need to inculcate the significance of uh, global languages of course 
the Bangalore City University uh, has been supporting the department in all respect uh, in the keeping in view of the national education policy. I think department has greater role to play uh, in the four years integrated or five years integrated diploma and certificate uh, streams. I think uh, there are opportunities for the all the professionals, even commerce, management, science uh, uh, graduates also can take the um, uh, courses in the global languages. Keeping that in the opportunity, I think we need to strengthen more, we need to sharpen uh, the lang global language skills more. So I hope the department will take up that responsibility and Professor Narsimurthy sir is there with us uh, to help as a dean and a senior professor of the university. Even morning, uh, Professor uh, Lingraj Gandhi sir, our honorable vice chancellor also inaugurated this uh, seminar. He was highlighting the significance of global languages in an university. So keeping all this in our mind, definitely we should shoulder the responsibility of the uh, developing the departments and strengthening the department. And we should produce more and more quality global language professionals so that the entire world can get the maximum benefit out of it. So with this uh, small remarks, once again, I thank and congratulate the uh, vice chancellor and other officers of the university for supporting uh, Professor Jyoti Madam in organizing this very important event. And also on behalf of university and department, I thank Professor Narsimurthy sir for his constant uh, encouraging uh, in developing this kind of, in organizing this kind of very important academic events. Uh, congratulations madam uh, for you and your team. Uh, I, I request you to kindly take up these kind of assignments, more and more assignments, definitely it will give a very good name to the university and also you can really serve to the mankind. So thank you, uh, very all the best and congratulations. Uh, I thank the organizers for giving me opportunity to share some of my views in the valid session of this very important academic event. Thank you one and all. And thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rebecca? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for highlighting the importance of the need to learn a foreign language. Thank you for encouraging our department to pursue our goal of educating our students with foreign languages. Thank you for encouraging our students also to learn a foreign language as this is the need of the hour. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for speaking also. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I now welcome our Dean of ours, Professor Narsimurthy, sir, who has graciously accepted to preside over this valedictory function, sir. Sir, welcome to you. And uh, thank you, I thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Sujata to present our Dean, sir, to the public. Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank uh, you. To all uh, Professor Narsimha and Dean Faculty of Arts, Bengaluru City University. Uh, presently, Professor Muthi is working as Professor and Chairman at the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism. Uh, he served as Chairman in Department of Electronic Media, Bangalore University, Bangalore for almost eight years. Uh, Professor Muthi served as Chairman for BOS in Mass Communication in several universities. He has published several research papers in national and international journals, and he has also traveled to many countries. Professor Murthy served as syndicate and academic member of Bengaluru City University. He also worked as acting vice chancellor of Bengaluru City University for five months. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Now, I have to speak, I have to deliver the presidential address. I request uh, Dean, sir, okay. to deliver the presidential address, sir. Please. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening to uh, one and all. Uh, respected registrar, Professor Ramesh, Chairman of the Global Language, uh, Mr. Jyoti Venkatesh, Sujata Swami, and other distinguished uh, participants of this event. I'm audible? 
Yes, sir. Hello. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I'll thank the chairman, Jyoti Venkatesh. She approached me to uh, organizing the webinar and uh, preside over this uh, validatory functions of your webinar. And I'll thank the uh, Professor Jyoti Venkatesh. As uh, said by Professor Ramesh, our star, in the era of globalization, the language is symbolized the cultural identity. The language is symbolized the cultural identity of identity of the any region. Now, it is more than any time in the history because of globalization process. The globalization aims to unify the world through language and culture, through language and culture. In general, this unification is mainly through a several, of course, language like a French, Spanish, Japanese, the European and even other Asian countries' languages. Of course, it is uh, almost because of the era in this globalization process, it is several more than 80% of uh, the words, of course, local lang languages may disappear in the next few years. In the next few years, you see that is you take an examples. So in India, examples you take an examples in India itself. What is happening? Our own mother tongue is it, it, it is it is losing the importance. Importance. Everybody wants to speak in English. Every family wants to speak in English. You see that is same as it is because of the due to globalization. It is estimated that more than 80% of the world's local languages may disappear in the next few centuries. Of course, in the era of these globalizations, which is full challenges and intense competition, everyone is required. You see that is, there are several transnational companies, transnational companies have started to establish their business, this organizations in more than one nation, say especially India and Asian countries, India and other Asian countries, the transnational European and American companies. They require the interpreter or known language. You take an example, it's Japanese. Japanese, they will give an importance for their language. The Japanese who learn, other than Japanese, if you learn the languages, they will offer several fellowship to them for IES studies in the Japan. So like that, other languages, Spanish, either French or German, whatever the language which are offering in our institute, in the global language departments, which we are offering, it is really, really, it is a challenges, challenges for us, and also challenges for the other languages and even the transnational companies. Transnational companies, there is a lot of opportunities. There is a lot of opportunities for the I mean, I mean, employability for the, the language who is going to learn, learn in the sense Japanese, either French or German. Now, in the several occasions, I used to discuss with uh, the chairman of our global languages, uh, Dr. Jyoti Venkatesh, which language is uh, very popular. She was telling that is, no, sir, German is popular, Japanese is popular, French also is popular. You see that all languages are very popular. Why? Because of, because of the transnational transnational companies, transnational organizations, which they are establishing their activities in the other countries, especially the European and American countries, even Latin American countries, 
which they are establishing, they are encouraging to the, their own languages. So in this context, the contribution of the our own department, our own department, the global language department is working, working, working to you know, uh, uh, train other students in the field of the global languages. Of course, since several years, of course, several years you now in the it was whole department in the Bangalore city after trifurcations. This department is after the Bangalore city university. The madam is doing you know hard working to the encourage the students and bringing so many diploma courses and of course attracting the students and also it is helping the public to learn the other languages. So in this context. I'm very happy uh, to uh, give a presidential address in this context. And uh, also, as I said, our registrar Ramesh uh, categorically analyzed that is uh, how global language is important in here and globalization. And uh, once again, I'll thank to the uh, Madam Jyoti Venkatesh and Sujata Jwami and other uh, department uh, faculties uh, to inviting me to preside over this uh, function. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, Thank for you. the potential remarks. Thank you Thank very you. much. Sujata? Thank you, sir. That was a very practical insight. You spoke about the fact that there are so many employment opportunities there. And uh, thank you very much for recognizing the efforts on behalf of our department. Thank you so much, sir. Now I will, uh, I would like to present the vote of thanks. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to our register and register evaluation, Dr. Ramesh, for providing us his support at every level while organizing this webinar and for having graciously accepted to present the valedictory speech. Thank you, sir. I would also like to thank Professor Nasima Murthy, Dean, Faculty of Arts, Bengaluru City University, who consented to deliver the presidential address and grace this occasion. An event like this cannot happen overnight. It needs perfect planning and a bird's eye view for details. We have been fortunate enough to have a visionary in our chairperson, Dr. Jyoti Venkatesh, who foresaw the need for such a webinar and initiated it. I wish to express our deep sense of appreciation and gratitude for her tireless efforts to make this event a resounding success. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I wish to acknowledge that we are thankful to all the eminent speakers on this webinar, and we thank you for being with us this evening and sharing your valuable insights. We are positive that your enormous contribution will certainly benefit hundreds of students. I would also like to thank Mr. Karan of Indo-Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industries for his inputs and his efforts in organizing this webinar also. I would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to Johnson, our PG student, for the perfect logistic and technical support and guidance he has extended to all of us for the webinar. On behalf of the Center for Global Languages, Bengaluru City University, I wish to thank all the participants who attended this webinar. Finally, I also extend my thanks to all my colleagues, the teaching and non-teaching staff of Bengaluru City University who have extended their unflinching support to us for this event. Thank you. Thank you. I thank once again, all my colleagues and the department staff for uh, helping me organize this webinar. I also thank all the speakers today who made time to be with us for all these hours and share their experiences and thoughts with us regarding foreign language skills and uh, its uh, uses today uh, in the field of, uh, uh, you know, in different career options. And of course, uh, I like to again thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Lingraj Gandhi, for delivering the inaugural address today. And of course, I cannot thank enough our registrar, Professor Ramesh, for accepting to deliver the valedictory speech. And I also would like to thank our honorable 
Dean sir, Nasimuti sir, for accepting to, you know, preside over this validatory function. And uh, thank you, Mr. Karant, for being there with us all through the pre uh, preparation of this uh, seminar. And I look forward to many such programs in different languages from different uh, other speakers who can share their experiences, who can share their vision with us and our students in learning and the requirement to know a foreign language today to become a global citizen. Thank you so much for everyone for being with us today. Thank you. Namaskara.